Greetings, mortals, and welcome to The Broken Pact, the mythic odysseys of Theros show on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I am your dungeon master, or should I say your Therosian chorus for this adventure, Ruben Bressler. Uh, and these heroes are my players. Uh, I'm going to have the four regular players introduce themselves first, and then we'll talk about our guest. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I always go first when we introduce uh, the players, so I, I'm just I'm just doing it. Um, and uh, as I said, my name is Jordan, and I'm playing Astarok, who's a minotaur, uh, who is a fighter, and was part of the Boros Legion, which doesn't exist on Theros, but he, he brings a little bit of it with him, you know? And that's him. Hey, everybody. I am Riley Silverman, and I am playing Safia, and Safia is a native of Theros, and she is... I'm using a Triton build for her, using the uh, legacy, the, the lineage uh, options that you can find in uh, Tasha's Culture of Everything, and she is a Nyx-born, and she is a cleric, and she is a worshiper of Thassa. Uh, oh, awesome. Uh, hi, I'm Danielle Radford. I'm playing Lydia. Uh, Lydia is also uh, sailing. Uh, Lydia is a swashbuckler robe. Lydia also worships Thassa. Uh, Lydia, oh, the kid means well, but there's nothing she loves more than punching and punching again. Uh, not words, done like books. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Ashlyn Rose. I play a Selesnian Luxodon who has made her way over to Theros somehow with Astarok. And uh, she is a happy go lucky, you know, the glass half full kind of uh, do gooder in a way, but wise enough to know that not everything is good in the world. And her name is Tuturu. Tuturu! It's a thing we. That we, well, we, we didn't warn Gil ahead of time. That's right. Now you know, Gil, for when we have you back. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, uh, Gil, let the folks know um, uh, who you are and, and what you're doing. Hey, folks. Uh, my name is Gil, otherwise known as Gil the Vlogsmith. I make a lot of cool stuff uh, in my forge. I'm a blacksmith. And uh, oh. today I'll be playing Mikal, the Minotaur uh, monk. Yes. Ooh. And and other things. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, speaking of some other things, we would be nowhere without uh, not only benevolent overlord Dom Zook, who runs everything, uh, but also we have a couple of excellent sponsors, uh, starting first with Hero Forge. Ah, yes, our wonderful Hero Forge. Uh, minis with full color options and loads of customizations from combat wheelchairs to banners of war. Make your favorite characters using their hero character system. Check out heroforge.com for more info or enter chat command exclamation Hero Forge to find out more. And seriously, their customizations are insane. And they're continuously upping their game each and every time. It's it's pretty incredible how much from like even last year or the year before to now they've added. So continually making it option to like really build onto your characters and make them your own. So again, check out HeroForge.com. Excellent. And we're also sponsored, of course, by Die Hard Dice. Yes, Die Hard Dice. I don't know if I have the link to the communications oh. document. All right. Let me <laughs> let me help you. Hold on. Uh, yep. Here's the zombie uh, orifice. Thank, hey, so yes. Thank you so much for the raid. Thank you so much. Thank you for the raid that bought us some time. And uh, since you guys are all here now, you know what you should do? You should check out our friends at Die Hard Dice, where you can save 10% by using code NATURAL20 at checkout. Use command uh, exclamation point DH Dice in chat for links and info. The code only works till the end of this month, so get in on it now. And you can order our friend CB's dice set and get your 10% off. So you're like double helping friends. That's right. We're all, we're all friends of CB here, right, Gil? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, thanks to everyone who watches us on YouTube or listens to us as a podcast. Uh, do us a solid and do give us a like, a comment, subscribe, do the whole nine. It really helps 
uh, the show and the channel as a whole. And also, if you join our Patreon now, uh, you can be a part of the new Exploration Society. Hmm. Your support comes with many rewards like special pins, swag, merch discounts, one-page adventures, and more. Be a part of the Society and join up today. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Um, I think that that is our pregame reminders. So without further ado, let us dive into tonight's episode of The Broken Pact. Episode 7, Ordeal of Perforos. The party is on a mission to collect the approval of the gods of Theros. Their mission, to convince the 15 members of the Pantheon to reopen the gates of the plane to the greater multiverse and reconnect the world with the life force of the world tree. Some gods thus far have been supportive. Some have been much less on board. Ifara, the goddess of civilization, was one such difficult customer, and the party left her island city last week without her support. Now back on the high dream seas of Nyx, Theros' god realm, the foursome travels inland, sailing over mountains of stars and fields of dream stuff, toward their next appointment with destiny at Mount Velus, the seat of Perforos, the god of the forge. And that is where we will pick up our tale. It's just a few days travel east from the city of copper and marble that takes you from the Mystic Sea to the border of what would be land. Um, but just as you were able to do when the Moray drifted unencumbered over the Tovian fields when you visited Crufix, you so too can drift unencumbered over this dreamscape up the slopes of the Ashlands and towards the mountains where Mount Velus sits. The active volcano is imposing even at a distance, and as you get closer, what would be smoke and cinder rising from its peak on the material plane appears as plumes of brass and manifested creativity. You have a bit of time before your arrival, if you wish to do anything. I have a scene that I want to do with Lydia, um, and I think that I would have done it probably before we got to the land, I think probably while we were still in the open seas. Okay. Um, and I think I would have done it probably while Astaroth and Tutsubaru were maybe like down for the night and I was maybe keeping watch on the ship. And uh, Lydia, I, I think maybe like what well, maybe while you're keeping watch, maybe while I'm swapping out with you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lydia, um, I've been, been meaning to catch up with you because there's been a lot of revelations and information. And you may have learned a little bit about me and myself and, and where I'm from and what the ship is from. And here's the thing. I, I've like gotten knocked out quite a few times in my life. I, I, I tend to be someone who seeks trouble, but never inside the jaws of a T-Rex before. Yeah. So just bear with me. Can you tell me of all the art you've put on the ship, what's what's your favorite? Right now, mm -hmm. my current favorite is what's your probably all -time favorite. What's your all-time all favorite? favorite? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's a tie. It's a tie between um, Lightning Buddies, which I just love. I love that you have that in common. Uh, holding up the world—that's something I'm very proud of. 
But there is this picture that I did of Thassa, where Thassa uh, is is on a, a beautiful field, and uh, which I know god of the sea but sometimes goddesses like to wander um so the one that i did was she's in the field and um her eyes glow like starlight and her hair shimmers like water and goes down um through her perfect shoulders and uh it just makes me really happy will you, will you take me to it sure and we walk over to that particular uh drawing which is a little closer to where um my cabin is Okay. I kind of motion to the mast and you see on the mast a piece of like wood that is maybe a little discolored compared to a lot of the other wood that's on the mast. And you see that piece of wood right there? Mm-hmm. That's the original piece of this ship. Oh. That's the piece of a ship that was the first mortal ship to ever sail to Nyx, the ship mm-hmm. of Calafea. The monsoon. Now that's not the whole ship. That's just that piece of wood. See, because every other piece of this ship has been put together over time by the women of my family as we have passed this ship down. It's like a patchwork of everybody who has contributed to it and built it and modeled it. Lydia, I don't have any female children. Hmm. Most of my children one is one is male and one doesn't identify with any gender and so does not wish to inherit the birthright of the women of my family. The thing about this ship, Lydia, is that being a captain of this ship is not a ownership. It's a stewardship. It is our duty to keep it safe to pass on to those who come after us. So this is your favorite piece of art on the ship? It is. It, it's my favorite piece of the art. Mm-hmm. I, I take my hand and I wait. This isn't quite what this spell is for, but I'm hoping that Fasa will appreciate the gesture and will give me a little bit of, of boost for it. And I wave my hand over Lydia's drawing and I cast Mending. And I'm essentially doing magic water seal where I'm making her men her image a permanent part of the ship. And oh, wow. as your hand brushes over exactly what you say, it becomes a shimmering permanent version on not just the surface, but into the wood, into the ship. I, I use magic to add my pieces of myself to the ship because I'm a magical being. But other people in my family have used the sweat of their brow, the hammers they forged, whatever calls to them to build it. And you you have used art. So when I'm gone someday, hopefully a long time from now, I would like you to take the, res- the stewardship of the moray. Oh, thank God. I thought you were going to be mad at me and you were telling me you were giving it to Odie. Oh, jeez. <laughs> thank you. I can't. No, he can't. Say, he doesn't have a long enough lifespan. It would, it would be, I don't know how long crabs lived. I should know that, but I don't know. He's also kind of a weird crab. Yeah. What wow, is this is. Nothing, buddy. Go back to sleep. Okay. So. I, uh, Lydia looks around at the ship and all of the pieces that have been brought to it by the members of Sophia's family and where they've all come from. Um, and just feels this real sense of this has always felt like home, but now it's like an awe. It feels like a place of reverence. Um, and so Lydia turns to Sophia and says, I accept a stewardship of the ship when that does happen. And I only hope that I can make you as proud um, as you are of the ship. I know you will. Oh, and also, you see the, maid, the maiden head up there on the front of the ship? Mm-hmm. That's my mom. Like, that's an image of her. So if you oh. felt like, you felt like commissioning one in my <laughs> image when I'm gone, just putting that out there. Anyway, um, why don't you get some sleep? I'll take the next watch and I'll talk to you. I will make the most beautiful maiden head for you. Thank you. And 
it will be completely appropriate. And then it goes back down. <laughs> Just gonna let that pass. I won't be here, so it won't matter. <laughs> and that's all I wanted else? to do. Perfect. Would anyone else like? Did anyone else have any scenes? No. At, <laughs> as you approach Mount Velus, it is an imposing, active volcano, uh, far inland in the material plane. But of course, we're in Nix, and. The moray sails effortlessly through the fields and approaches uh, the mountain. And you can see, um, as you approach it, it is an active volcano, uh, beautiful and uh, austere against the purple sky. And you can see that there is a entrance carved into the side. Uh, there are two large braziers that burn uh, at the entrance and sitting between the braziers in a uh, patient cross-legged um, sitting formation uh, is, is a uh, minotaur. Um, McCall, would you like to describe yourself? I am a six foot seven tall minotaur of a uh, brownish fur with the hair kind of like a little bit of an orange tinge, long three foot horns on each side, wearing a simple robes and uh, nothing more. And he's basically in a lotus position, just breathing calmly. Eyes closed. Hey, hey look everybody. <laughs> Hey, 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 how's it going? Hey, buddy. Hey, nice horns. Hello. I will get up, kind of stretch myself, give my neck a few cracks. Oh. Well, what do we have here? Well, I mean, I just thought I'd say hello. We're here on a journey. I mean, I've heard that there are minotaurs here in, in this whole place, but I haven't run into many. Hey, it's it's good to see a, well, not a familiar face, but, you know, like a familiar, uh, I don't know, anatomical configuration, I guess. You have not <laughs> seen many of our kind here? Ah, oh, well, you know, I've, I've been traveling with these... Humans and demi-humans, uh, you, you know how it is. <laughs> the, the people who are uh, Nick's born and, and Tritons and humans and uh, God, she's a Loxodon. There's not a lot around here, but uh, I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's good to, to see a Minotaur, you know? I think I understand. Well, uh, what are you all doing here? Oh, well, I mean, you know, we're, we're just uh, traveling around looking to, uh, yeah, you know, meet those big old people who are uh, you know, the gods. We're looking for gods. Are you talking about Perforos? Yep. And he points behind him. Uh, he, mm -hmm. uh, Astrock looks back at Sophia and Lydia and is like, Perforos, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Pretty much any god, but he's the one that's there, so, yeah. Then you wish to speak to my deity. Well, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. well. Yeah. Sounds great. That would be if, great. If we got an end, that, that would be a real, really nice way to start things, right? Sure, yes. I. Um, my name is Mikal. Uh, what is yours? Hey, it's nice to meet you. I'm Astarok. And Astarok, like... Gives you know, holds out a hand. Firm grip. Hi, I'm I'm Lydia. Nice to meet you. And Lydia just goes up and starts again shaking, uh, shaking oh, the hand I, with I, wild abandon. Okay. Hello. Hi, um, Lydia. You said. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, 
I'm Tuturu, and she'll go up and like gently shake your hand. I don't know if I'm taller than you or not. You probably are. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I'm Tuturu, and gently shake your hand and like kind of like daintily back up as daintily as Alexadon can. (laughs) So pleasure to meet you. And you? I am I am am Sophia, the tide speaker. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Uh, Let us not waste time, shall we? Let's. Head into the mountain. All right, lead the way. Yeah, uh, I'm not good on land, so I'll, I'll let you take charge here. You're able to moor the ship uh, to the side of uh, the volcano and follow Mikal into the mountain uh, through some massive 20 foot tall, 15 foot wide stone double doors uh, into the volcano temple. Uh, It is active. There are um, priests in robes um, who are uh, transporting manuscripts and books and also uh, carrying heavy baskets or rolling wheelbarrows of ore and coal and ingots um, through the hallways. You see maybe a half dozen or so uh, people in robes. Um, As you walk further into the temple... Um, you uh, also see uh, a couple of oreads, uh, fire nymphs, who are tending to uh, one of the rooms in the temple as well, and they nod to Mikal and to you all as you walk in. Eventually, Mikal takes you to uh, a door, and uh, it opens into a huge room that opens to the sky. This is directly under the opening uh, in uh, the peak of the volcano. This is the caldera of the volcano. And set up here is a massive anvil, a huge set of uh, smith's tools. The volcanic magma uh, bubbles around and is being used to heat the forge. And at the forge is the god, Perforos himself. What do they see? Well, this large, and when I say large, I'm talking about gargantuan size, a uh, humanoid figure, but with rippling muscles, if you will, <laughs> a large hammer in hand as he begins to <laughs> strike, sparks fly everywhere. The sound is deafening as it echoes throughout the uh, the chamber there of the opening of the volcano. His uh, metals are being heated up by the lava itself as he... <sighs> one last time, you can hear Mikal say, Perforos, I have brought you these uh, adventurers. They mean to speak with you. And then Perforos looks over all of you, places his hammer down, places his tongs and his metals down, and he looms over his anvil and he peers into all of you, almost seemingly piercing your flesh and your soul. What is this then? What do you all want? Uh, Astra. We, uh, what? What? Is nobody gonna say something? I, I, I think he's talking to you. We're starting to talk, so we just let you go with it because he's kind of scary. Yeah. He's really oh. scary. And uh, fire is the worst kind of land. Hello, uh, big, strong, red god. Uh, you got a very impressive forge here. Uh, back where I'm from, we we got a big forge. We make all our weapons and stuff, but it's it's nowhere near as good as this forge. Of I course can... it isn't. Yeah, yeah, when you're right, you're right. Uh so uh we we wanted to uh chat about uh so you, you like to make stuff, right? And that that's also like fixing things. And uh turns out everything's breaking. <laughs> like the whole world is breaking and uh we were like Who's the guy to fix it? It's gonna be Perforos. 
And boy, coming here now, I'm like, if there's anybody who can fix the world, it's this guy. I mean, look at look at those muscles, right? I, I'm impressed. You mean to butter me up? What is it that you truly <laughs> want? Uh, well, uh, let me just say that if you buttered up those muscles, it would look quite <laughs> impressive. He stops for a moment and looks down at his arm. No, I do not think butter would be good on me. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, you know, if it's if it's like, yeah, no, no, you know what? Never mind. I'm dropping that line of reasoning. I'm not great with flattery, if I'm being honest. I, I just, I thought maybe that was a good way to start talking with a god, but frankly, so here's the deal. Uh, the world is... Oh, good, is, uh, finally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm a little roundabout about things. I ain't much of a talker. Um... The world's like got a got a rot spot, and it's it's spreading and it's breaking all over the place. And uh, and we wanted to come to you to try and uh, I don't know get you to help, get you to fix it. Fix it, yes, that is what I am known for: forging yeah. things, creating things, and uh, forgiving people. <laughs> right? Like I don't know titans that you. You all agreed to lock out of the world whoever knows uh, how long ago. Uh, but it's only I, can say. I do not know what you are talking about, and that is beneath me. Well, everything's could beneath you. Could you, you, you have a hammer? Minute. Maybe you can you talk like hammer stuff? Like maybe the hammer to hammer? I have yeah, a great yeah, axe. Yeah, yeah. It's tremendously different. If you understood okay. in like, you know, two handed weapon like conversation, how much nuance there is between the two of them, you would understand that you can't just go at a at a hammer man with a great axe and like try and talk shop, you know? Uh, all right. I, I guess I can try. And like Tudoru looks at her like chill master Matt uh mallet, which is like in this very warm place right now. And she's like, oh is it melting? Uh, um uh excuse me, uh great deity Perforos, um, so there was a, a deal made with you and several other deities, I think all of them, and you all forged, uh, let's say forged, for instance, because you're in a forge. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so you forged this deal where Theros would be closed off to the rest of the multiverses. But because you did that, you all made that choice. Well, now Theros is dying because it doesn't have access to the multiverses. And so we need you to kind of undo that so that Theros doesn't die. He looks back at his forge. I am quite busy. He, hand, he picks up a large Bident. This is currently being made for Thassa. Yes, he looks at you, Safia. Do you recognize this? Safia, like, suddenly, like, drops down as if, like, she is, like, in the presence of, like, the holiest thing she could possibly be around besides her god itself. Like she just like <coughs> drops down. It's like, it's like it's like if she was in front of the Holy Grail. Like she sees it and she just like is like I, I recognize it completely, and I, I do not wish to take up any time that you need to create that. So um, just if you want to just say yes, we could go and be out of your way. Like that would be the best for all of us really but definitely want you to be able to keep doing that that's very very important where did you find is that the same one or is it a new one i or? recreated it i didn't know that was possible it's so beautiful thassa had lost the other one and she requested it of me that i make a new one it's i am almost true. complete with it in fact he'll pick it up again and just kind of show it off why is it got just two pokey things? It's because it's a bident. But why? Why do you have two horns? Shut up! 
<laughs> I don't know. If I could have gotten more horns, I probably would have gone for it. A plant I mean, why, sh- God, why did your axe have two blades? What's wrong with you? Well, Tutu made it. Well, I made it for him. Well, okay, no, it's funny. That's it. Two blades would be cool. Things. Don't make fun of people's cool stuff. All right, all right. Safia, uh, with your passive perception, you would notice that the light uh, above, and of course, you're open to the sky, so you have uh, maybe 200 feet open to the night sky or to the to the next sky. Um, but the light shifts slightly in the cylinder above you as uh, Perforos sets the Bident back down onto the anvil. Are you using the light to forge it? Is it coming? Is it being made from pure light? I'm sorry. What? I I, I don't know. I, I I'm not a forger. I'm I'm more of a more of a, sh- a shocker and destroyer. So and splasher. So I I'm yeah, sorry if I I don't want to tell you how to do your job. You're really good at what you do. Uh, Perforos will, will actually look up at uh, what Sophia is uh, trying to talk about here. Okay. Um. You're a god, so I'm not going to have you roll. Um, you look up and you can see in in the uh, cylinder, you know that uh, many beasts of various kinds uh, reside in Mount Velis with you. And it seems as if uh, the movement of this weapon has attracted uh, the attention of perhaps a drake, perhaps a serpent of some kind, maybe some sort of spirit that is in the uh, in, in the chimney here. Um, but as you look up, you see, you know, a dozen, two dozen life forms, um, some of whom are paying attention to you and some of whom are not. Thank you, Hard Knock Dice, for the raid. And also thank hey. you, Dream Wisp Jen, for the raid. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Those are, those, are, those are the life forms pouring yes. into the chimney. Those are the life raiders <laughs> coming into our show. Yes. You, you see <laughs> some hard knock works ice. Media. Ah, yeah. Works Media. Thank you for the raid. You see you see some hard knock oh. ice scrabbling along, a dream wisp. Yeah, all those things. We didn't we didn't bring those. I just want to point out for the record that those that is a coincidence of time that we just happen to be here while that is happening. Because I we would never, ever, ever do anything to stop what you're doing right now. Mikal, what have you done? I I have done nothing, your grace, your lordship, your great deity. Uh they I don't think they mean any harm. I believe they are here with purpose. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't have brought them here if, if I knew that they were going to do anything uh, bad. I uh... you can you can use if you have any magic that makes sure you were telling the truth, I can I, I could probably make it. I, I want you to know that we are not lying. We hundred percent have a quest. That was given to us, uh, but we would never do anything to harm Thassa's Biden ever. The eyes actually kind of pierce again your your flesh once more as they move around. <sighs> Very well. Yes, yes, I can tell that you are not lying. <sighs> Good, because I don't have that spell ready to go today. So <laughs> I talked a big game, but I realized I didn't think about it. Uh, as Perforos is turning the full attention to the party, um, a drake of some kind drops from the ceiling onto the anvil and grasps the Bident. And it screeches. Oh, no, no. I If, if somebody comes down, <laughs> my sure. lightning bolt thing is ready to go. So sure. I don't know if you want me to roll first. or no, roll an attack for me. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to do that at level four. Okay. So actually, I'll do, I'll, I, think I, I, I think I'm doing more of a warning shot right now. So I will do it at, hang on, where's this bolt? Okay. Um, sorry, I'm looking for where I have the slots of how many times I can use it per day. Oh, yeah, we rested. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, here we go. So one charge is 
level three. So I'm just going to fire a warning shot at it right now. Uh, so I'm just going to fire a third level at it. And that's actually, I believe it needs to take a, a it needs to make a save of, what does it use? What does it save against? Um, sorry. I think it's dexterity. I would assume. Yeah. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah, probably. Uh, 17. That saves. So it's only going to take, uh, oh, I see right now. I was looking at call lightning. That's why. So it's only going to take half of this. Okay. So. Okay. So I rolled, ooh, and it finally works. I rolled 31. So what's that, 15? 15. All right. Yeah. So I fired off a 15 damage lightning bolt at it. Excellent. Nice. Um, it's, takes the full brunt of the lightning uh, as it scrabbles around it and it hisses. And as it looks at, at, uh, around and sees Perforos, it makes all uses all of its movement to climb back up and into a hole into the caldera and out of view with mm. the bite. <laughs> oh. I should have used a pun. I should have used a more powerful attack. Insolent. Uh, hey, hey uh, big guy, if if if, uh, if you want to, like, I don't know, throw me at that thing or something, I could maybe take it out of the air. You would not survive the ordeal. He'll grab a large boulder and just chuck it up there, and you watch as it basically breaks and disintegrates as it flies up there, raining showers of just, you know, pebbles somewhere oh, else. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. That seems like that'd probably be pretty bad. I mean, I'm tough, yeah. but... That thing's a rock. Yeah, I, I don't have that much healing on me. I'm sorry. That's... No. Why do I get off of the boat? Just why do I leave the ship? I know. I know. <laughs> this upsets me that? greatly. I know what. I know what I can have you all do for me. You will retrieve the Bident of Thassa. Yeah, we will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh -huh. You will join them in this quest. Uh, yes, I will make it so. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And he bows down. Good. Now return to me as quickly as you can. We'll do that. All right. Fast as we can. And with that, Perforos turns back to the forge, making something new. As and, uh, you all, yes. And, and uh, uh, Astarok like claps a hand on uh, Mikhail's shoulder, and is just like, "Hey, it'll be nice to have a, another Minotaur on the team for a little bit." Uh, uh, Mika, can I call you Mickey? Uh, I um, sh sure. Can I call you uh, Rock then? Because uh, it's like my father's name, so I just figured I just call you rock what? yeah yeah a lot of people call me rock they call my father rock hey <laughs> look at that <laughs> they call your father rock ah oh, well his full name was Astarok, like me but uh you know they we, they called him rock and i uh, my I father's full recently. name was Astarok as well well that's one humdinger of a coincidence right there i mean i guess trying to kill are. each other there might be other Asterox out there, but... Yeah, but... Uh, like two different planes? Yeah, with... oh. I mean, different area uh, poluses? Yeah, um, <laughs> wait a minute. Where, the, 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 where are you from? Where, where are your people from? Well, the wastelands. Just about northeast of here. Northwest of here, sorry. To because, point out uh, to you. Look... This is a bit of a big coincidence, but let's just say I'm I'm from really really far away from here, so uh, the customs are a bit different. It's a just a bit of a surprise to hear that there are minotaurs who have that same name going on here. Indeed. Yeah, well, uh, let's walk and talk, I guess. Sure. Uh, show me the way to your ship. That's right this way. Yeah, it's it's just it's where we where we moored it when you saw us moor it. Oh yes, uh, yes. Um right. 
Um, well, I, he'll kind of like <laughs> put his head down as he walks with them. <laughs> so you can. Teacher is uh... gonna like. Teacher is gonna like stand behind them and try to like gauge their height and like compare <laughs> a little bit. See, see if they're like the twins, maybe. How 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 tall is Astrock? You know what? I don't remember. <laughs> 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 um, I, 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 I had an answer for that back in the day when I came up with the character, but I think he's, he's, he's a little over six feet, probably. Uh, I think I had Mikal as... You said six, six seven. Six, mm -hmm. seven, right. So you, you're probably a bit taller than Astarok. <laughs> <laughs> Lydia turns to Tuturu. Tuturu. Uh... Yeah. Isn't it so weird that like both of them come from someone named Astarok? I wonder. Oh, oh, my brain's hurting. Never mind. I stopped. I stopped wondering. Ah, stop. Ah. Oh. It happens a lot, doesn't it? Oh. I don't know how all of you do it with all the thinking all of the time. Yeah. So you all That's probably can. probably nothing. You all can uh, head back out of uh, the temple towards uh, the ship and look at the volcano as a whole to uh, begin looking around, I suppose. All right. So uh, you know this place probably better than we do, Mickey. So uh, if you were a Drake and you had stolen a God's Biden, where would you go? Well, I would uh, start to look uh, kind of points up at like these rocky cliffs on the like northern side of the um, the volcano, maybe the there. I mean, I'm just really guessing, but uh, it couldn't have flown off too far. And uh, he'll look around to make sure that it isn't hasn't flown away completely. It seems like as good a place to start as any. Yeah, it... you're not seeing any drakes that are flying away from the volcano at the moment, so. Do you know why the Drakes or any of the beasts were so interested in it? Well, I mean, something as shiny and as powerful as the Bident of Fassa would have turned eyes everywhere, I think. But we should really do something about them. They, they do interrupt my master's work from time to time. Mm. I have a feeling that I have my work cut out for me when I head back in. It'll probably send me on more of those missions to clear out the tunnels and such. Hey, how about, I don't know, maybe we could clear two drakes with one party of adventurers, right? I mean, the way I see it, we're trying to get in good with your boss. You're trying to get in good with your boss, you know, because you work for him and all, and... If we get to Biden, he's going to be like, thanks, you did the thing we said. But if we, you know, get rid of this pest problem, maybe he'll, uh, uh, you know, go with what we've been trying to get him to do. You have a point. Very well. Let's let's do that. Yeah. All right. Bit of exterminating. I've never punched a Drake in the face. This will be fun. Uh, would you like to climb, or would you like to take another route up? Is there another route we could take? Um, you could look around for one. You could try to fly. You could try to take the ship up. Um, Does a ship the fly? The choice is yours. Uh, Not that I know of. I mean, I, I've never tried to make it fly, but <laughs> we're also in Nyx, so maybe... Think happy thoughts? I don't know. I don't know how that was supposed to work, but um, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. If you can make that ship fly, my sad thoughts are going to counteract any happy thoughts. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. That's that's good to know. You're you're you're. I know that you're rough enough when it's on the flat sea. I don't think you're going to want it when it goes on the not the the sky sea. Mm -hmm. I just don't like flying. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a great climber. I'm going to be very honest. Like I, me and climbing, <laughs> let, let's just say I, I don't, my, I got like five thumbs. Okay. I'm going to say that you two did just kind of rule out like our two best options. <laughs> so I don't know what you have as a third, but I am open to workshopping it, but we should move quickly. 
Uh, I'm gonna look around and see if there's like a path that we're not noticing, like like a like a trail that heads up the mountain a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Both of you can go ahead and make survival or perception checks. I'm a survivalist. Mm. I'm gonna go perception because okay. I want to have a chance. <laughs> that survival's not terrible. I have a plus eight to survival. Ooh. I have a plus eight to perception. So there you go. Nice. I got 14. I okay. got I got 24. Wow. wow. Um, it is a rocky, uh, uh, jagged exterior to this mountain. You see uh, a path that looks like it could function and would not be too terribly difficult uh, for you too, true. But um, Sophia, you're able to pick out like a pretty decently sized, like like it was made for kids on the aggro crag. Um, that sort of zigzags up the mountain, uh, single file to the direction where you want to go. Ah, like a Spartan goat path. Got it. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I think. I think if we go this way, you might be okay. Mikhail was think? kind of getting ready to go on the boat, really excited, and then he goes, "Oh, oh, oh, yeah, no, um, yes, I forgot about that path. Yeah." Um, <laughs> That's actually probably where we, I should have mentioned first, but uh, well, yeah, no, okay, I'll well, yes. I we'll actually be. like that your first thought was go to the boat because it's my it'd be my first thought too. But you know these these it, no, yeah, you're right. No, that that does head up right where we need to go. Um, let, let's these Bidet hating idiots. <laughs> I don't hate the right. Bidet. I'm just saying <laughs> that I think a Trident perhaps would be more efficient. I think why do things three when you can do things two. Because three's one more, you know? Two true That's high fives, point. Lydia. Astarok, have you even swung a trident or a bident before? I, I, you know, I, I've, I've got all the training and the basic weapons. They they kind of make you go through all of that before you can be a world jack. Although I did kind of skip the line. That's ah, a big deal in another place. Hard to I express mean, here, but... Astrock, if you really think about it, you're constantly mauling people when we're in battles. And when you maul people, you're using your horns and there's only two of them. So technically your head is a trident. <gasps> I'm not and your realization your comes across McCall's face as well. So maybe you should be excited to see a second dent on it, Mr. Unident Javelin Thrower. All right. Think about it this way. My javelin's <laughs> good and it's got one. My horns? I think they're even better. <laughs> and that's got two. So the way the logic goes from there is that if there was a third, and in fact, if you look at my horns plus my uh, my javelin, well, that's the best there is, right? Three. Three is pretty good. Four starts to get unruly, but I'd say three is kind of a magic number. <laughs> well, say to each throne. Now let's go. As you're, right. having, as you're having this delightful mathematical discussion, uh, you do... Uh, arrive at the um, at the other sort of outcropping that has an entrance. It appears into a different portion of the uh, the volcano. Um, there's sort of a 15 foot hole that's been burrowed. It looks like an old entrance into an older forge um, that hasn't been used in a while. Um, and uh, Mikkel, go ahead and make a history check for me. History, oh, plus zero, uh, 16 total. Okay. Um, you would know with a 16 that um, there are many dangers in the caldera uh, and Perforos is not the only one. There is uh, a red dragon named Thraxes, who makes his home in the halls of Perforos's original residence, um, which Perforos abandoned to make a larger home deeper in the volcano. Um, occasionally, uh, Thraxes will make his own creations um, using melted gold uh, from his hoard, as opposed to Perforos, who prefers bronze and iron. Um... Superior and, metals, to be sure. And Thraxes will offer these gold creations to Perforos. In exchange, the god typically lets the dragon just stay. Um, 
but uh, the dragon does have Drake uh, followers as well that are more mm -hmm. akin to its form. Hmm. Uh, so this revelation is coming up to me as I as we continue up this path, correct? Yes. Mm. I put my hand up. You know, I've just come to the realization that where we are going might be the den of Thraxus. It is a red dragon that resides in my master's old forge. A uh, dragon. He's... Yes, a dragon. He's got minions, followers of, of him, and they are Drake-like in nature. Uh, if if my putting two and two together does anything at all, then I am to assume that perhaps we might be entering the layer of Thraxis itself. I just want to warn you. Oh, uh, yeah. So maybe by... Uh... Eliminating all these drakes like we were talking about, we could be angering something that's a bit more of a big deal. Well, Lydia, Is Lydia Thraxis nice? She wants to punch a dragon. I do kind of want to punch a dragon, but not if not if Thraxis is nice. I don't want to punch a nice dragon, but I do want to punch a mean dragon. Well, I feel like the minion might have been stealing the Bident on purpose to give to Thraxis. Perhaps mm. as an offering. Okay. If that's the case, then we may have to deal with the dragon itself. Yeah, it was a pretty, like, active thing. It came in and it grabbed that Biden and it just skedaddled, which mm. uh, certainly didn't seem like spur of the moment Drake thought. Hmm. We should be on our guard. Um, as you approach the entryway, uh, let's get a marching order. Uh, the the uh, entry here is about 15 feet wide. If you want to go three wide, you can. Um, as you enter, it looks uh, like the stairs lead down into a caldera base. Um, and there is a huge uh, vacant area of lava uh, with lots of stalactites and stalagmites uh, poking out of the ceiling and of the ground. Um, as you look in, you can see mounds of gold as well and treasure. Um, and that is what you see. Is, oh, wow. is the gold near our feet or is it a little further in? No, it's, it's much, it's pretty far in. I would say it's about 125 feet from the entrance where you're standing um you can see that it's it's about 50 feet down and then 150 feet over uh to the largest landing where there are several mounds of gold okay um i think mikhail will kind of be near the front ish area at least kind of somewhat leading uh them over there he's he's not familiar with the the end of the trail so much but he feels like he should somehow be at the front okay and astrock will stick with him up near the front excellent so astrock what do you know of your father man i barely met the guy I thought he was dead my entire life, and then, you know, I went out to go find a Hydra egg, and it turns out he hung, hangs out with Hydras. I met him for, like, 15 minutes. He uh, gave me a, a necklace, and he grabs the, like, gruel necklace that he still has, and uh, then I had to go. Would I recognize this necklace? Um... I would it's, say no. This would be a necklace that uh, that Rock received in it's a worm's tooth necklace. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mikhail will look at the necklace non nonetheless and just kind of stare and admire its craftsmanship. Hmm. I mean, he was like a, a beast speaker, you know. He he lived with a, a big old hydra and was just out in the woods and. Uh, what he said is he thought I was dead when I was a baby, but apparently it didn't work out that way. And then <laughs> when I got here, this whole 
place where I'm from is real far away. Uh, where are you from again? It's a place called Ravnica. Trust me, Ravnica. you haven't heard of it on any maps. No, I at least I don't think I do. Um, but anyway, when I got here, some of them oracle types, uh, whoever, told me that uh, my people are from here. So, you know, when I came back, seemed like it was worth at least searching around. So if you, if you got another Astarok you know, then I don't know, maybe I'm on the right track. What do you know hmm. about your father? Well, What's he like? Uh, stern. Uh, I haven't seen him in a long time, actually. Same with my mother. Do you know your mother? Yeah, she died when I was little. Oh. I was raised by my grandma. No, my, my mother is not uh, dead, at least not, at least within the last five years that I saw her. Uh, what was your mother's name? My mother's name was Vaka. Uh, out of character, I don't remember if I had a name for my mother. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. Uh, I don't even remember, you know? I just... Grandma called her uh, Lindy, but <laughs> I'm not sure if that was a real name or not. You know how it is. We, we 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 tend to throw nicknames around more than like getting too caught up in what anybody's called. You are what people know you as, you know? I I do understand that, yes. Hmm. I, still I wonder if there's anything else there. Between us anyway. Yeah, it feels crazy to be sort of a be a one hell of a coincidence, that's for sure. It would. And I mean, if there's anything I've found out about this place, there's a lot of, like, fate and destiny involved in everything. Yes. Yes, you are right. There is definitely a lot of that. Look, how about this? You think on your dad for a while. I'll think on mine. We'll see if we can find anything that, I don't know, could be a connection. Will do. Well, uh... Shall we? Let's go. So Looks like we're about to make some uh, winged uh, friends. <laughs> Teacher is going to lean in and be like, so in terms of dragons, what what size are we like talking about here? Are we talking about like, oh, I'm a big dragon that's going to like stomp all over you? Are we talking about like a cute little baby dragon? Well, I, I think it might be a large-ish dragon. I mean, how do you get followers if you're a small dragon, right? Yeah. Mm. Good point. Okay. Okay. I'm going to just read up on some spells then and kind of prepare for uh, what we're about to go into. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Um, so if you wish to uh, have a layout, I have the map up for you in our roll 20. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. What would you like to do? Oh, How is okay. the lighting in here? Is it, is it visible enough for the non-dark dark yeah. people? Yes, the lighting is pretty good, uh, honestly. It is, uh, the magma from beneath is uh, giving an eerie glow uh, to the whole area and the light that reflects and refracts off of the gemstones and gold piles that are around also gives some interesting disco ball-like lighting uh, to, to the whole vicinity. It is a huge room, massive, maybe uh, 200 feet by 400 feet in total. It is a really big area, but even uh, with uh, no aid of needing light, the light is either bright or dim everywhere you right. look. Although some areas are hidden by stalactites and stalagmites casting some shadows. Okay. Um, looking into... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, looking into the chamber, you don't presently see uh, any life forms. Um, 
Go ahead and make a perception check, though, for me. Uh, Lydia and Sophia. Okay. Since you two are the Thassa worshippers. I got 24. I've got 16. Okay. You uh, both are able to uh, see a, a, in a couple of interesting glints uh, in a half dozen different piles around the room. Um, but Safia, you're the one that is able to spot on its own little island off to the, the just beyond the main piles. Um, it looks like the Bident has been drop, dropped off uh, and is sitting on its own on one of the little islands across the room. Is it this, is it this one here? Yes. Okay. Okay. That Bident needs to be protected at all costs. Okay. Um, should I try to run up and grab the Bident or just kind of stand and see if I can protect it? I don't know that I'm necessarily the strongest. I don't have, you know, the great lightning powers. I've only got stabbing. So. Hey, you are so good at stabbing, though. Yeah, you, you, you do stab pretty well. I The thing is, I kind of want to make sure that the little fly boys are taken care of before we just grab it and run because. If that mag if that thing falls in the magma, I'm gonna be really sad. And I think Fasso will be really sad. And I think we need to like avoid that outcome. So let's just like make sure we got like a secure lockdown and then we get that fight in. Okay. Sounds good. I could probably make a sound appear from somewhere to kind of lure the drakes out or see where they are. Yeah, I, I, I could run around and, like, yell and stuff, and they might go after me. Is there, like, a good place for me to hide somewhere in this? Sorry, my the, the map is not uh, doing anything for me. It's over quite all right. Um, there are lots of nooks and crannies and crevices. Each stalagmite uh, offers a hiding place. Each pile of gold offers a hiding place that, uh, that you could uh, find yourself hidden from most of you. Lots of good shadows to hide in. Okay, great. So I uh, I could hide by this gold um, and see. So I pick the whichever closest kind of gold is towards me and I, I hide okay. there. Okay, so there are there is a, a pile of gold that is relatively near to you, uh, about 40 feet away. There's also one that's about 90 feet away. Both of those would require jumping over the lava to get to, though. Um, the closest pile that you could hide behind um, would be probably 150 feet uh, without having to jump over anything. That lets you go down the stairs to that central area. How long would the lava jump look? Um, uh, 15, 20 feet. I could make um, it. Yeah. Well... I I can try the lava jump. Uh, well, actually, yeah. Man. Mm, oh, maybe don't. No, oh, I'll, wait, I'll just go to the wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. I forgot. And then Tutoru starts like reaching around in her robe, um, and then like she gets into her bag and she starts like going through her bag really quick and like mumbling to herself, "Oh, where did I put it? I don't know." Ah! And she like pulls out this like robe this like robe that has like a bunch of patches on it and looks kind of weird with like really weird fabrics you've probably never seen before um, because they're not from this multiverse um, or this plane. And then she's going to, please tell me I still have a ladder on this thing. <laughs> oh, I totally <laughs> forgot about this. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Oh, I don't. I use the ladder. Hold on. What else can I use? Mm -hmm. It's got to be something useful. I know. I'm like, what is in here? I have a window. A portable <laughs> ram. Uh, <laughs> hold oh, on, man, we I gotta just... use a portable ram at some point, right? I have a riding <laughs> horse, <gasps> which could have came handy when we were running up the hill, probably. But eh. um, yeah, I don't. Ha How big is a silver coffer? Not big. I have a ten foot pole. Like a... We could pole vault. <laughs> we could pole vault. <laughs> All right, so yeah. yeah, I'm gonna rip the patch off of my robe of useful items and uh, create a 10 foot pole. So yeah, you see me like reach into one of the little tiny patches. 
and I just start pulling out this like pole. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Can I use this? Yeah, I'll see if I can take that. Um, and Lydia has never pole vaulted before, um, but will not turn down a challenge. And flying kind of seems like fun. It's what, like being what, on the, you know. I am going to point out that I, I see what you're going for here. And uh -huh. I think it's cool, but I will point out that the fail case here isn't hitting the ground hard. It's dropping into magma. Uh, yeah, that's Just, true. I'm never going to stop somebody from doing something big and dumb and awesome. <laughs> I just want to make sure that the stakes are laid out for everybody here so that we so, don't end up being stakes, if you know what I mean. Uh, that's yes. a really good point, and I'm glad you said that because I think it would have been offensive if I would said it. Um, <laughs> I I just wanted to say that like, I don't know how long it'll last with the magma, but I can make ice. Like I can cast Yay. a spell that creates ice. So like maybe we could like cool the magma enough to run across it like temporarily. It'll probably won't last forever. It'll probably just last like for like, I don't know, maybe a minute as this as I continue to cast the spell. But um then um actually I don't think uh, yeah, I just think that maybe like maybe like it would like hit the ground in like a 20 foot radius like a four it's similar so we could make like a cool little ice thing that like might melt down but it would give someone a chance to run across so like we could possibly do that yeah i like that do we all need like to that. run across or can we just have one of us probably just one all right who's the best at dashing well um, i have yeah. i mean let's put it this way um i can move pretty fast I uh, right. have no cumbrance of armor on me, and I can jump pretty damn far. Uh, I mean, I don't necessarily want to fall in the lava either. If you got a better solution than just ice, I, I would like to hear it. But I could potentially run and jump across and then do so heading back. But I feel like I, once I do make my way over there, that something might happen. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm I'm in the middle of this cavern, right? And yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, and you I definitely really feel have a like if I cast escape. a spell, that's gonna like alert a lot of things to where we're at with it. So it's definitely not like the sneakiest of ideas. Well, so is so is me. I mean, I, if I run over there and jump across that, I I have hooves. I mean, yeah. I'm going to clatter on the ground. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. But uh, if you're going to engage in this sort of tactic, you have to have a plan of egress. Right. Hmm. He looks around, and Astrock looks a little crestfallen that nobody is uh, impressed by his use of the word egress. <laughs> <laughs> Lydia doesn't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure Mikhail those either. He's just going to, yes. Hmm. <laughs> Tutu's having flashbacks to where she's heard that before. <laughs> it was probably from Astarok. <laughs> <laughs> was this Rock the one who said that? Someone said that. I think it was, wasn't it Astarok training to become a Wojek? Like, wasn't that like the things he learned? Yeah. That, that was what he clung to coming out of his Wojek training. What's <laughs> the word okay. egress? That's great. Egress. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Other question. Do we have to go to that island of gold? Is there any way we can bring that Biden to us? Mm, I mean, yeah, I'm just saying maybe if we go around I, somewhere else, we could, uh, I don't know, catch one of the drakes, get to bring can, it to us, something like that. I can get to it, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, I I could get to it. I just don't know if everything's gonna attack me. Oh, that, that's a really good point. Everybody, uh, Tutru's actually more uh, uh, good at air travel than that. Uh, you might guess. I, <laughs> what yeah, you can fly? Ah, uh, I I can f glide. I have big ears, and she'll unfurrow her ears, which are like manta ray size ears. My goodness, they are gorgeous. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I could probably like use the pole and jump across and glide. I but... did not know that Luxodons could do that. That's impressive. Yeah, uh, not many of us can. It's a long story, but but yeah, I I can I could probably I could probably do that. I just don't know if I'll get attacked on the way back. Oh, they probably definitely will. Yeah, let's do one better. Let's tie maybe several ropes to you, and we all hold on to the other end, such that in case you do slip and fall, we can immediately pull you back out with not one but three ropes, or maybe more. Okay, I'm I'm down to try it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's our best bet, and like we don't have a lot of time, so I'm willing to do what we need to do like let's i go. offer up my rope and i begin to kind of just unspool it and start tying a like a like a probably a bowline knot sure i haven't been in the boy scouts in a long time so i don't know what the correct <laughs> knot is <laughs> sounds like a good knot sounds like a good knot so the plan is let me let me get this straight as the end the good, plan is we don't know so yeah, please right. repeat it back to us we are whoever is uh, so Tuturu is going to glide towards the Bident. Yes, using the pole vault to get the to initial get the height, height needed yeah. to glide the rest <laughs> of the way. Right. And some other members of the party are going to be tethered with ropes to Tuturu, swinging underneath <laughs> No, 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 was... no, we're not swinging. We're, in case she, like, doesn't make it enough way, we can pull her oh, out of the lava before it becomes a problem. <laughs> okay. uh, and I think pull I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready with lava. Ice Storm. If I need to cast Ice Storm on the lava in a pinch, like, if she goes down, boom, Ice Storm. Fantastic. Yeah. Pull her leather <laughs> body. As, as Tutru is uh, preparing... Um, I, uh, am, we have a couple of toasts that I'm going to get to hey. here. Vampire54 wants us to let us know, looks like the volcano done been blown up by the god and <laughs> took out the stream. Next thing you know, the creek will rise. <laughs> and with wherewithal, haha, it was me, Kiora, and I stole the stream. <laughs> Just like I stole the Biden to Fassa. You'll never catch me. <laughs> Kiara. Yes, it was me, Dio. Um, <laughs> yes, okay. Um, so, Tuturu, you're presently at the entryway. Do you want to scoot in any additional way, or do you want to do it from here? I cannot open okay. roll 20 to see it, so I am going to... Um, let's see. Um... I will get as close as I can without being seen from anything. Okay. Um, you can't. Well, make a perception check. Great. Perception. Use my loud metal dice. <laughs> yeah. 10 plus 5, 15. Okay. With a 15, you look around, you do not see any uh, any beasts or eyes upon you. You think you could probably make it a little bit further in. However, uh, you are at sort of a, a... The entry is at one of the higher points. So if your goal is oh, to great. glide, your entry is... Pro where you are is probably the highest point that you would be. Okay, great. And how far away is the Bident again? Yeah, the Bident... From where you're standing is 220 uh, is 215 oh. feet. Okay. <laughs> I'm just getting down the thing. Okay, got it. Huh. All right, oh gonna... yeah, we need to close a lot of ground before we're jumping over lava. I see. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a whole pathway we have to go down first. That's why I was like, maybe we should take care of the critters because they're gonna come yeah. after us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um. let's let's move closer. Okay. Yeah, but but then then the two through pole vault plan happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm not going off flying two through. I'm just saying. Yeah, we let's give her less ground to cover. Perhaps well, I shouldn't be uh, tying the rope to her now. Then. Yeah. No. 
We okay, good. That, that would be, I think, one. horrible. Yes. All right. I have to say, that. watching Ruben move our party along the roll, tw- it very much has a yellow brick road kind of vibe happening to it. Oh. Like, it's like, like we're, we're skipping down the yellow brick road. Follow, 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 follow. Did I, did I lose the the little picture that I made for? Oh no, there he is. Um, so you're you can move uh, into the chamber and make it to the main island or the main landing area, um, and no no thing is taking notice of you. There are no drakes. You hear very n- little sound in the area other than the burbling of the magma, um, and. Uh, but once you do make it to the middle, and you're very close to the Biden at this point, uh, maybe only about 70 feet away, uh, you finally do hear a little bit of movement coming from the northwest of the chamber. Um, and uh, stirring in that corner, you do see a dragon um, uh, appear uh, above, just above the crest of the island. Uh, there. Uh, there it is. Looks like we might have company. Uh, as it is rising, uh, go ahead and make stealth checks for me, everybody. Oh, no. Ooh. Uh-huh. I have disadvantage. <laughs> Okay, I got a 17. When it what says my armor... Stealth? Oh, there it is. When it says my armor has disadvantage, does that mean I have to roll twice, or it's just I get a penalty? Um, wait, what's the question? I'm it sorry? means you have to, Yeah, you have disadvantage because your, ar- your armor gives you disadvantage because it means your right. armor is so bulky. Yep. You have to try harder uh, to make it not yeah. shake. I say as someone has heavier armor as my other cleric. So. All right, as I click by... I roll an 11. Okay. Ten. Okay. I also got a 10. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 16. All right. Look, we Minotaurs okay. ate stealthy. Lydia? <laughs> it's not our thing. Uh, hello. Yes, I, I rolled a 17. All right. Uh, Safia and Lydia, you are able to duck behind piles of gold uh, and stay unseen by the the uh, by any peering eyes. Unfortunately for the other three of you, you are sort of in the middle of the uh, the area, and the dragon looks over to you and says, "Hello, are you are you here to make a to make a, a a tribute to me?" Uh, 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 yes, we sure are. Oh, good. Great. What do you have? Uh, well, we have things, Hmm. wonderful things. We're actually more of, uh, bounty treasure seekers. Uh, so we, we actually come to ask you what you seek and then we go get it for you. Oh, 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 okay, great. So you, you, you take like, you take requests. Yes. Yes. Uh, The dragon is going to fly uh, to, uh, and it like sort of stops on the magma just off the edge of the island. (sighs) And says, oh, that's excellent news. Um, hmm. What do I want? Um, Well, well, how about I like... we take a look around and see what you have, and then we might be able to make suggestions for you. Yeah. Make like, a... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, like, for instance, you got that trident over there that seems to be missing a, a prong. We could get you on with three. It'd be better. <laughs> make a make a persuasion check at advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Persuasion, let's see. Even as a joke, Sophia's like cranky that the Biden's being made fun of. <laughs> 20, like, okay. 26. Ooh, 26. Ah. Oh, you're like a you mean like a tri like three. I yeah. mean three is way is is better than two. 
<laughs> you tell me. I mean, I mean, I mean, yes. Yeah, three's better than two. <laughs> uh, while they're talking, uh, Sophia and Lydia, do you have anything you'd like to do? Um, I think because I, I feel like I haven't been detected yet. I think I'm gonna like see how this. I'm gonna see how this plays out for them, and then because okay. uh, it might work. It seems like it's actually going pretty well, surprisingly. So <laughs> I'm gonna let them have their shot. Um, I, I am like getting my my amulet ready. So if I have to cast Ice Storm in a hurry, I'm ready for it. But I'm not. I'm not quite to the point where I'm like readying as an action. But I am like, okay, this is <laughs> head in the game. Eyes on the pride, feel on the flow. Like, great. Uh, yeah, I mean, go get me a trident, I guess. Yeah, well, uh, you know, just to make sure we're, we're comparing it, and it's 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 a good trident. If uh, if you just gave us that, you know, so we could hold it side by side and be like, oh yeah, this this is this is as big. It it totally works. Mm. See, I just got this though. And also, like, the whole point is for me to amass treasure, not, like, give it away. So I kind of want them both. Because you know what's better than two and three? Five. Yeah, <laughs> two of them. Uh, right? we, can, we can get you a, uh, a, qu uh, a qu quint. Uh, et, five quint didn't. Qu qu yeah. I've never seen one of those. Neither so have I, think, I. I don't think I they think exist. Aquaman but... had one, but... Other than that, right? I feel like that's a thing. Yes, but uh, look, still, I'm gonna keep this one. I think. I, I don't know. Look, I, I'm saying if, if you've got if you got a nice trident and then you got a Biden, you just look. It's like why is he got a Biden? Am well, right? that Biden looks a little small, don't you think? Maybe yeah. if we just had to look at it to size it up with something that we could go find, we could measure that and uh, we can mark it on my horns, let's say. And then uh, we can go get you a trident that was just, you know, bigger than that one. Yeah, I, I agree. More, more, it... more suitable for just like, you know, one more inch, right? You. To say that you have one more inch above the other guy. <laughs> like, haha. It's two. Make a deception check at <laughs> advantage. Yes, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh not 20. Me. And a 10. Oh, oh, okay, natural 22. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, persuasion, you said? Deception. 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 Uh, where's my deception? Uh, minus one. <laughs> so, 19. Sure. Natural uh, 20, still, but minus still one. Still a nat 20. That's fine. Um, so let's see if I get a nat 20, just in case. I don't. Um, <laughs> okay. So you can go... You want to go measure it? Mm-hmm. Right? Don't we? Yeah. I mean, we can. We we have to assess its uh magical uh depth mm. and properties so yeah. we can make sure that we find one better. Better. Mm. Stronger. Okay. By the way, okay, you're you can... really nice today. Is that a new like molting? Did you just like? Oh, I did. I did yeah. just molt. <clears throat> this I like. Guy, this is my new. You like it? It's yes, it's I good, do. Right? Yeah, no, the oh, magnet yeah. really matches your look. I, I am impressed. I, I wasn't gonna say anything, but it, that's a stylish looking dragon, right? Yeah. Well, I, I, I try. I moisturize. I'm, I'm gonna cast thaumaturgy just to kind of like make the, the, the light around the dragon brighter, so he feels like he's beaming. So like he feels more confident and excited with himself as they're as they're complimenting him. I'm just gonna like make it seems like a little bit of light is just like spotlighting him. Mm -hmm. You know, I was recently told about putting butter on your skin. I heard that that might be an excellent look. Makes you glisten. It does. Yes. Unfortunately, I mean, I've, I think I've had butter in here, but unfortunately, I think it immediately vaporized. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps but, uh, something a little more sturdier. Sure. sure. Yeah. But uh, but thank you. I mean, I, I really do try to keep a, keep my figure and and make all my, my scales nice and shiny. Thank you for noticing. I, I appreciate oh, of course, that. Of course. Yeah, go ahead and take a look at the at the thing. Um, it just it just got here, so I don't really know what the deal is with it. Um, oh, one, of the, one of the Drakes brought it, but yeah, you can you can measure it and and take your notes and uh, and yeah, and see see what uh, what you can do on the way on the when you bring something else. Yeah, let's Great. just saunter uh, on over to it is, with no. Is there a, a way we can, like, you know, 
head over there without falling. You know, oh, like, can you uh, like? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. You you want me to like move you over there? No, I mean you can just like. Can you like make rocks or something? Are you are you powerful you like know, that? Or I can just move the Biden. To, I can just hand the Biden to the middle here. If that's oh, that, that, oh, that's great. That you are. Huge. Thank you. Look at you. I, I can't. Well, we didn't Biden. want to trouble someone as powerful no, 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 as you. No, no, Thank no. you. Oh, it's uh, good so, looking and generous to boot. I mean, so Thraxes heads over and picks up the Biden. Uh, Safia and Lydia, are you still hiding? I, I think if he starts moving in the direction of where we're standing, I think we're going to try to like duck back. But I'm going to at least try to duck back behind the gold on this side. I don't, yeah, think, I, I, don't, I don't want him to fly around like, hey, what are these two doing here? Like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very Scooby Doo, a little bit of like sneak, sneak, sneak. <laughs> yeah. and like, I'm going to put my hand on, on Lydia as we move and give her guidance. So great. I'm like, and I'm going to say, like, fast is on our side. We got this. And I'm going to cast and that on her. So. Perfect. I would say uh, both of you roll stealth at advantage. Um, and Lydia, you have guidance as well. Yeah. Add a um, D4. Add a, yep, go ahead and add a D4. And uh, this is because, uh, well, Roxy's is so taken with this new trio. All right, I so rolled a 24 I... again. I don't know how Jeez. this is like, great. Like, I'm kind yeah, of I'm kind of bummed because I want to have a don't fuck me gill moment tonight. But I didn't have a chance to get right. uh, 23. Wow. Yes. Silent as the night, you're able to hide behind uh, the stack of gold. I'm not, um, I'm not. I'm not so sure that even Mikal knows where you two are now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're in a different D and D game at this. Yeah. Point. We're supposed to be ducking it. We're swimming through the gold. <laughs> right. Oh, you can if you want. If you want to. If you want to like burrow oh, into gosh. it. Oh gosh. No, no. Can... I think that's probably dangerous. I think we're gonna not do that. I mean, I don't, Lydia, I don't speak Lydia. I don't speak Lydia, but Sophia is like, oh, I'm good. No, I'm good. I think Lydia goes to maybe see if she can, and Sophia's like, no, baby. Lydia, yeah, I would choice. say. These, this is some. This is a big pile of gold, by the way. Uh, just so we're so we're on the same page. Um, Raxes is going to pick up the Biden and bring it over and set it down and say, uh, "Yeah, here's here's the here's this thing." Um, yes. you wanna, you wanna go ahead and take a look at it. Great. I'll, I'll have Askarok do that. Hold it and kind of like, oh, we're going to measure it to uh, to uh, Mickey's horn here, right? To See how high it could go. Pick up a stone on the ground and then just kind of stand straight. And Astaroth goes over and kind of like leans into uh, uh, Mikhail's ear and it's like, hey, you said you were pretty fast, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if I want to run away from something that <laughs> is looking directly at me. Right. I had to like, you know, make a mark on my horn slowly. <laughs> slowly at you. You grab the Biden and you run. And I'll stall it. And then we all run. I, how? Okay, that's the plan. Here. No, no, no. Oh, Astra, Astra. <laughs> let's, let's, okay. let's workshop this a little more. We can buy uh, a little more time. Yeah, yeah. No, just just uh, continue to, like, my we're, horns are really tough, man. We're, uh, we're almost done measuring. He's going to get suspicious soon. Yeah, I okay, don't know what and, else to do here. Am I just going to run? And now we'll assess its magical properties. Oh, yes. Take it. Take it. Yes. <laughs> Yes, let's assess the magical properties uh, in which we will. Um, uh, uh, here you go, Tuturu. Um, <laughs> we've measured it now. Uh, I'll hold on to it, though, but you can do what you do. And then, Guys, uh, we've and got while that's it. happening, <laughs> going to cast Thaumaturgy and make the back area of the cavern tremor. Okay. Mm. Uh, make it tremor. Interesting. Go ahead and make a deception check at advantage because that's actually one of the things that happens in this lair is mm. occasional tremors. Uh, so that's that one. And then I'm going to use this dice for good luck. Okay. I got an 11. Um, Thraxes turns to look and is about to turn back. <laughs> I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna, go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mimic it because I see that it got him to turn, and so <laughs> I, I do it as well, and I actually like make the light flare up in that area too. So like, okay. if 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 Mickey doesn't start running, Astaroth, I gotta do everything myself. Well, I, I'm running, but I, I'm making sure that like you sure. know I have a little bit more of a 
<laughs> a oh. lead than just the. <laughs> um, Safia also roll a uh, deception at advantage. Okay. Okay. Uh, my highest was a sixteen. Uh, so, Thraxis turns, is about to turn back, and double takes, and stares off in that direction for for a moment. Step turns. of the wind, full movement. I am out the fuck of there. Okay. <laughs> uh, Whoa, so he's what's, fast. what's your full movement? Uh, right now it's uh, 45. Uh, and so 45 twice or three doubled. times? Yes, doubled. Uh, so you're 45 doubled and then to 90. And then I do step of the wind. Okay. So that's 180. <laughs> Holy crap! He did say he was fast. I think no. I think it's just um. Oh yeah, doubled. No, jump, run. It would be tripled, I think, because it's action, bonus action, move. Right? Yes. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Monks are broken. <laughs> <laughs> they're, pretty, they're pretty good. Hold yeah. on. It, it, You're if that's basically the case, at the I'm entrance. The outside. No, two hundred. Okay, no, it's not all the way out, but not all the way geez. out. You make so it would be hundred and thirty-five feet, mm -hmm. which gets you there. You're basically at the entrance. Okay. The second um, that he runs, I cast spiritual weapon right where the bident was, and I make it a bident that looks just like it. <laughs> I know it's going to be spectral, but. I figured this is a weapon of my god, so I feel like it's not out of my purview as something that I can make. Sure. So it's it's just there. So will it be like next to me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. I'll be okay. So you make a spiritual weapon that looks mm -hmm. like the Biden. Yeah. And your magic is, of course, of Nyx and very Nixian. And so uh, would look extremely similar to the Biden itself. I would say this is another deception check, uh, especially okay. because Thraxes has turned. And we've Ooh. we've essentially done a sleight of hand trick here. <laughs> yeah, because I know I don't I don't think Light I have a lesser illusion anyway. But I out of character, I know that a dragon would have seen through it anyway. But I'm not sure if he would he would he wouldn't see through a thing. It does exist. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, regular or with advantage. I would say regular okay. this time. Fair. Yeah, very fair. That's a pretty, it's a pretty tall order. Um, <laughs> come on. Hey, Choo Choo will be looking hey, confidently. Please don't fornicate my dice. I, uh, <laughs> I would appreciate. What's I that? rolled my insight, uh, or sorry, my perception on this is high. So, Okay, then it's probably not going to beat me because I rolled a 14, which is not the best. But okay. I, I know this is not Velma. This is not Velma. If this was Velma, she would have made him, right. she would have sold him this Biden if it was, if it was but Velma. I, but. but I will say, as soon as, as soon as he turns around, Tuturu will say, it's cursed. The Biden is cursed. <laughs> uh, okay. It, it, it disintegrated my friend. It's cursed. You cannot touch this. We must leave immediately. <laughs> yeah, it is cursed. Yeah. Don't, oh, don't, and, and then yeah. and then I pick up the bite it with my this is my spirit. I can move it, so I start rotating it in the air because I'm still hide, hidden behind the gold. He can't mm -hmm. see me, so I start yep. like, like spinning it around like like it's a horror movie item. Like it's like flipping around in the air. Nice. And um, I, start, I start chasing Chuchuru with it to kind of sell what she's like safely uh, chasing her. But yeah. Get it away right. from me! Your uh, your your Biden's cursed. Uh, good thing we're finding you a better one with with three things. Uh, but we gotta go. We can't spend any more time uh, before we find because we we, we we could run out of tridents, right? Uh, let's go. And Astrock <laughs> is going to also start running. I'm sorry, okay. we can't help you, but don't touch it. And she runs away. <laughs> Okay, are you double timing? Um, I'm double timing, but I also let me see what this spell is. Hold on. Um, oh, do, 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 do. cost and action. What is its components? It's just verbal. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna say like my verbal thing, which he's not gonna understand anyways, because it's like so, like Luxodon. But I'm gonna cast fast friends at level um, four, so that me, um, who else? Can I target, how many people can I target at level four with fast friends? Um, Just two? You can target one additional creature at level four. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'll target, well, I'll probably, yeah, I'll target, yeah, Astarok since you're closest. 
You're 30. Well, I'll, mm. I'll, I'll target Sophia. Does it make him faster? Because I'm already pretty fast. You yeah. Probably... Who's the slowest out of us? Probably me, because I only yeah. have 30. I don't have anything that makes me faster. Everybody else has something mm. faster. Yeah, I'll cast it and target you, Sophia, as well. Um, and yeah, I'll okay. cast fast friends as I shout, like, I'll just shout, like, uh, oh, for, or, oh, for Matt Celestia's sake, ah! and I'll run out. Okay, what's, what is the effect of fast friends? Can you read it to yeah, me? Yeah, when you need to make sure something gets done, you can't rely on vague promises, blah, blah, blah. When you cast this spell, choose one humanoid within range that can see and hear you, and that can understand you. The creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become charmed by you for the duration. While, uh, while the creature is charmed in this way, it undertakes, no, uh, oh wait, fast friends. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought I was making someone fast and following. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, your friends oh. fast. Yeah. Right. I, I, when you said it, I was like, I think that's a charm spell, but right. you seem to be committed to it. Maybe this is a spell I don't know because I don't have right. it. Right. I didn't yeah, know what it no, did this either. This is humanoid. This is humanoid. Ignore this. I thought this was just oh, going to okay. make someone run faster. Ignore me. That's great. That, I'm that's, running out. I'm like running that, out though. the cave. Great. <laughs> Um, so so here's what's happening for me because everybody else but me is fast anyway. I'm throwing up my Nyxborn Shroud so that I am, if it tries to attack me, it has disadvantage. Sounds great. Uh, Lydia, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do something as well. Okay, well, I, I, so I can dash. You can. If I, if I dash, then I can make it 60 feet. Um, so that is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go ahead and dash out. Can she okay. use her dash for cunning action to go another another dash if she uses her bonus action for that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I sure can. So then that gets me a, what, 120? Uh, 90. 90? Okay. So I dash and I go 90. So not quite as fast as uh, Mikal, but uh, you you are able to sprint past Astarok and Tuturu. Uh Meanwhile, Sophia, you are still hidden behind the gold. I think now would be a good time for us to roll for initiative. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. Oh, he doesn't believe it? <laughs> I'm going to roll in my... <laughs> but we were so convincing and had such a clear, clean message. Wait, wait, wait a second. <laughs> I've <Yeah>. been hoodwinked. <laughs> I will say that because it was such a successful uh, argument, I will say Thraxes is flying back towards where the noise came from and is further away. Hooray! Okay. Sort of on this little island here. Okay. Uh, what are your initiatives? I rolled a one. So, oh, no. yeah. So it's four. Okay. All right. I rolled a four, so it's three. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a three, so it's seven. My God. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, three people that were right in front of this dragon. Great. Awesome. Lydia? 16. Hey. 16. And Sophia, you rolled a 12? Yep. I rolled an 11. Yeah. Got it. Uh, Lydia, you're up first. Oh, geez. Um, I think I have no choice but to i'm gonna try to continue to dash out to safety okay um because i can do that so i'm gonna use mine to dash and then um that should get me almost out of the cave or at least closer right my you internet's acting can... uh... yep you're good you are actually at the cave entrance with just the dash mm -hmm. so you have uh, uh a bonus action left if you so choose um, if I'm already at the entrance of the cave, then I or an will action, actually, uh, skip my bonus. I... An action. Be because you're a yeah, rogue, no, you actually I'll go have ahead. Your regular action too. Um, no, I think dashing to the door is enough. Sounds for great. Right now, all right. Yeah, it's now going to be Thraxes' turn. Thraxes has a fly speed of eighty feet. Wait, I can outrun a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> well, my movement is 80. I could dash if I wanted to. I could still, um, you still could, out. I think. Well, my, no. my passive perception is 18. Um, Safia, you, you hid at, with like a 24? Yeah. 
I would say I don't see you. Okay. Nice. So I'm going to dash uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40. Uh, and I think I probably see the Biden. Which one? Well, I've already seen through the illusion of the spiritual weapon. Uh. Um, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to breathe fire at the person that is uh, holding the Biden presently, because I'm not a huge fan of that. I need a uh, DC 17 dexterity saving throw uh, from you, uh, Mikal. Uh, DC, uh, you said dexterity? Dexterity. Plus seven. Hey, not bad. 19 total. Hey. 19, 19 is a success. So you're going to take half of how many D6s do you think I'm rolling? 12. Close. 16. Damn. Oh. So you're going to take half of this. So many dice. We were half so of, close. Half of fifty-seven, Gil. Um, which wow. is gonna be twenty-eight. Twenty-seven. Yeah. Twenty-seven damage. Twenty-seven sure. fire damage. Sure. Um, do you have any uh reduced to fire? No, uh, no? I am okay. just a cow. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Thraxes unleashes a torrent of flame in your direction. Um, and uh, fortunately for uh, for uh, Lydia, just out of the range of uh, of Lydia. Um, but you take a little bit of that damage as the dragon is now landed on the platform uh, where uh, Tutru and Astarok would have been trying to get to. Um, and but Thraxes's full attention is on Mikel. The stakes are raised. Safia, I am going to use my movements to go the thirty feet that I can. So that would okay. be just to the border of the island, basically. Um, okay. I'm going to drop a spiritual weapon because I don't think that it would move fast enough to get to where he is at any time soon. So I might recast it later. But um, actually, yeah, because that was my movement. And then my action is going to be to pull out my... Um, actually, you know what? I wouldn't have moved because I don't want to be in the line of Tutsuru and Astarok. So I'd move here. And then I'm going to pull my staff of lightning bolts out. And I'm going to fire the most powerful one I can right now, which is levels... Uh, I believe it's going to be level 8 because I, burned, because I burned the spell slot, that would let me do the higher one. Um, so I need it to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, that's pretty high. Okay. Uh, 20. Okay, that passes. Um, but it's a 13 D6 attack. Um, and I'm just going to use my one of my channel divinities to do max damage. So that would be... So I'll do half of this, but that's a pretty high hit anyway. I think it's worth it. So, so 78 would be the total. Yeah, so 78 uh, divided by 2. So it's going to take 39 lightning damage uh, with that hit. Um, wow. And then yes. as a bonus... Okay, I guess I can't use my bonus action for the Spirit Tropics. Like, I already cast a spell, even though it's an item. But um, so for this round, that's all I'm going to do. You can okay. move it, can't you? And attack with it? Um, I can move it, but the problem is it can only move 20 feet per round. So there's mm. not a whole lot of reason to... to yeah, I'll move it for now, and if I, I I won't drop it yet. If I if I decide so, right now I can move it to just like about halfway between me and where it is right now. Um, in case the dragon comes back towards me, I'd, I'd rather have it floating there and ready to swing at him if he can. Okay. If not, I'll recast it. But I might as well leave it up for now because it's way. It can move like it can move twenty feet. Twenty feet per round. It, it's I can cast it within sixty feet, but I can only move it within. <laughs> Yeah. Got but it. right now, I can't recast it right now because I just cast the spell. So okay. Um, I believe I've given you uh, the ability to move that spiritual weapon now as well, but I, I did move it to 20 feet. 
ignore um, the dice roll. I was trying Astaroth. to I was trying to mark off that spell and I just accidentally rolled dice again. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> no worries. Astarok, it's your turn. You have a big red dragon butt in front of you. So Astarok is going to it sees that the uh dragon is uh attacking uh Mikhail and everyone else. And he's going to be like, oh, son of a... <laughs> All right, everybody get out! And he's going to run and try and leap up onto the dragon's back. <laughs> uh, yes. Go ahead and make, it, make an athletics check for me. Okay. Uh, sorry. I switched away from D&D Beyond for a moment. Okay, my athletics roll... That is a dirty 20. Good enough. You uh, are able to run right at Thraxes, and you're on its back. Or okay. on its tail or wherever you wish it to, near the back. Yeah. So I, I want to try and... Um, what I want to try and do is, like, take my axe. I don't know if you can grapple something this, like, much bigger than me, but I want to like take my axe and try and get it around <laughs> its like throat and grab it so that it can't like breath weapon uh, okay. everybody uh, long enough for them to get out. Um, this is technically a large dragon, so you can grapple the dragon. Okay, so I can just um, take an attack on it to like try and grapple it, right? Yeah. All right, so that's what I'm going to try and do. Okay. Because uh, I don't quite remember all the grapple rules. I use it so yeah. infrequently. Anyway, that's what I'm going to try and do, though. Uh, Sounds so I'll, great. So I'll take an attack on it. All right. Uh, that is, that's pretty high. Um, that's a, a 25. That bests its armor class. It is grappled, and you have your axe around its throat like you're riding some sort of Brahma bull. Yeah. Um, I will say that the recharge ability for its breath weapon I'll make it at disadvantage. I'll roll my d6 at disadvantage. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I, Astarok is like holding it by its neck. He's, I don't know if I can hold this thing too long. Everybody get out. All right. Any, and that's that's your turn? <clears throat> oh. All right. Uh, McCall. Okay. Um, You're almost to yield. the door. Yeah, I am. I have the the bite in me. Uh, I'm I cannot attune to it because I just grabbed it. But I will say to Astarok though, I will yell, "Are you sure we're running, or do we fight?" And I'll grab like a potion near my belt and just like, let me know. I, I will move uh, further out uh, of the thing now. So he, uh, the dragon is a large size. Um, yes. The route that we came in that is. Still large enough for him to enter and uh, exit, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, ask Rocco, you're back. Hey, I'm down to tussle, but uh, I don't know. That's got to be up to all of you. I'm already where's, kind of engaged in this thing. Safia is back on the main, the main, the main land, the main platform. Is she on? Uh, is that the blue little mark right there? Yes. Okay, great. Um, You know what? I will. Safia is right, right there. I will go ahead and consume the potion of growth. I'm just gonna. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yes. To kind of just crush the glass after I'm done with it. All right. And uh, I will stow the uh, bite into on my back and just kind of crack my knuckles. Okay. I believe I am now a large size as you well. You are the same size as the dragon. Yes. <laughs> oh, I thought to... you were big before. I'm going to gore it. I'm going to charge it, and then I'm going to um, uh, okay. gore it. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And all right, I use my dash action, and uh, as long as I move twenty feet, I believe I have that movement. You do. Okay, 25, great. Twenty-five, twenty-five feet. Great. Uh, I make an attack. Fourteen plus, and I believe it's uh, melee attack. Do I it? It's a non oh, horns right there. Plus six. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah. So, yes, 20 total. 20 hits. 20 yeah. hits. All right. Yeah, uh, Minotaur Monk is pretty cool. You can gore attack with the unarmed strike. That's pretty dope. That's so nice. then I get, which is cool because I get a 
extra. So horns deal 1d6 plus 3. Mm -hmm. 1. <laughs> so uh, 4 with that plus the Gorn attack, which, uh, oh, just makes... Yeah, no, just that's it. Just uh, I can make one melee with your hands. A bonus action. Okay, cool. That was my goring. That was my bonus action. And you also uh, add damage from your growth, right? I do. It's a, I believe it's a one d four extra. Okay. Let me look back at the one d four is fine. Okay. And let me just roll that. Where are you? Plus three. Okay. And then, so, um, how, what's the total? Uh, so I had one plus four plus seven total so far. Okay. And I believe I do move him. No. No, that was only for the hammering horns. I'm sorry. Okay. Actually, no. It, uh, but it, it, immediately after I hit a creature with a melee attack, it's part of an attack action. So I haven't really attacked yet. But you can use a bonus. No, I can't. Not anymore because it's that was part of the thing. Um, so nope. All right. Um, let me just go ahead and attack normally now. Okay. Two attacks. Uh, the other one does not hit, but the first one is going to be a 19. 19 hits. 19 hits. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. All right. Great. That'll be seven total for that. All righty. Um, Drinking the potion, growing massive in size, this huge minotaur runs directly at Thraxes and manages to to crack into the to the uh, the big lizard, but uh, is able to take a pretty pretty good beating so far. Uh, next up is Tuturu. All right. Well, that didn't work. So. <clears throat> Let's try this. Uh, teacher is going to look around at everyone and try to get a good sense of like who looks like they got hit. And it looks like it was just Mikhail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did I say I'm that a little right? toasty. <laughs> just a little toasty. It smells like uh, hamburgers right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then, uh, Tutu is going to uh, go ahead and cast. Let's go with a level, probably a level two at least yeah teacher is going to um kind of breathe in and then when she breathes out she's gonna let out a healing word and she's just gonna kind of whisper um um let the word let the earth guide you and when she does that all the energy flows through her and then again with the whole like you know energy flows out rises up surrounding him and it looks like leaves just rushing and rushing around until it like flies into him, and then let me roll. Yeah. I actually hit that twice. Uh, 15. So you heal 15, and then because I have all the cleric stuff, you get an additional 2 plus 2, so you get additional 4. So you heal 19 total. Nice. And then I heal for 4, but I'm not hit, so it doesn't matter. Oh, that's nice. the good stuff. Thank you. Once upon a time, millennia ago, Perforos loved Nylea and crafted her bow. And that was a long time ago, but you sort of, the nature and creativity coming together and you see the vines wrapping around, healing up where your burns were and you can sort of feel a little bit of the godliness in you from Tuturu's healing. Top of the round, Lydia. Whew, okay, well, I mean, Lydia's got to uh, gotta start. How how close am I? I'm sorry, my internet's not showing me the no map worries. as well. You how close am I to 50 feet from Thraxes? Okay, well, then I'm going to... Um, I'm going to have to dash over so that I can hit him, right? Uh, uh, if you uh, want to get in melee, yes. What was I'll that option? Out. Am I next right. to the dragon? You are not. You are okay. fifteen feet from the dragon. So, That's fine. Uh, I'll I'll just point out if if you do. I don't necessarily know what you guys all have, but if you do have any range stuff, you can do to him because he's grappled. He can't move next turn unless he uses his action to break out of the grapple. But he could still attack you if you you know are already within melee range. So, uh, uh, I see. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't have, I should get one. I don't have any ranged, so I'm just going to have to go in with my, uh, I can dash over. And then with my bonus action, I think I can still do an attack, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to hit with that rapier. And that is a 20. That hits. Okay, and then so for damage, that's uh, going to be... You do have allies well within melee if you yes. get any bonuses for that. Um, do I? You sneak attack. Yeah. A sneak attack, yeah. So that that's a five, and then with sneak attack... Ooh, that's a lot of dice. With sneak attack damage, that's a 14. 14 damage? Mm-hmm. Plus five or including the five? Oh, no, that's uh, 14 plus the five, so 19 total. Excellent. All righty. Oof, big, big stab with the rapier. <laughs> uh, is that your turn? That's my turn. All right, it is now Thraxy's turn. Thraxy's is going to roll at disadvantage to see if the fire breath comes back. Nope. Good thing I rolled at disadvantage, though, because one of them was a six. Nice. Um... <laughs> Uh, no matter. There are three, uh, in my mind, bad guys in melee with me, and I get three attacks. One with my bite and two with my claws. Uh, I'm gonna bite, uh, the, the thing that just stabbed me, I think. I'm gonna bite, uh, Lydia, and then the claws will go elsewhere. So let's see if, how the bite goes. Uh, 23 to hit you. Yeah, sure does. And that's going to be uh, 25 piercing damage Ooh. and two fire damage. Yikes. Uh, one claw is going to go at uh, Astarok. Natural one. The other claw yeah. is going to go at Mikkel. 16. 16, I believe, is my armor class. All right. Uh, you are going to take 13 slashing damage as one of the claws finds purchase. The other claw is like trying to like scratch his back and can't quite get to Astaroth. Not, I'm not happy about how this has developed. Yeah, that's not the plan to make you happy anymore. <laughs> you could have just well, the, accepted the plan our is that for you to go get me a trident. <laughs> Why couldn't you just go get me a trident? Uh, Sophia. Okay. Uh, I First thing I'm going to do is make the very weak effort to move my my uh, spiritual weapon closer to it. Um, so it gets to the border of the end of the thing because it's up and I cast it and it may come in useful. If I get the killing blow with the spiritual weapon because it arrives just in time, I'm going to be so happy. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to move myself. Blow. Yeah, I'm going to move myself uh, 30 feet. So I can get kind of just behind where Tutsuru is. So I will do that. And then uh, I'm going to turn and look at the dragon. And I'm going to burn a fourth level spell slot to send a high level guiding bolt at it. Um, it come bullet. on. Okay. That is a 19 to hit. Hits. Awesome. So let me just go. I'll, I'll save some time. I'll roll in the in D D Beyond. Um, that is going to be, that is 19 radiant damage to it. And now it's going to be glowing. So the next attack on it will have advantage. Excellent. Yeah. So yeah. So that happens. Not on it. Perfect. The guiding bolt streaks through the air and hits it right in the butt next to Astarok. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Astarok, uh, it is now your turn. So Astrox still has this guy grappled. He didn't take an action to break out of the grapple. Correct. Um, so if Astrox wanted, he can pull him up to 15 feet in any direction. Uh, because Is I that can... an ability you have? No, it's just a thing with uh, moving a grappled creature. When you move, sure. you can drag or carry the grappled creature with you. But your speed is halved unless the creature is two or more sizes smaller than you. I will say <laughs> that you can, you can do that. You can pull the dragon by the tail. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is grab the dragon and then just pull it further into the... Uh, Astro grabs it, he's like, all right, big guy, you're coming this way. And he pulls him into the cave, 
like further. And then but I can still attack towards, when I'm back grappling. towards the island. Uh, away from where from the exit. Okay. So like there-ish? Yes, that seems fine. Oh, my spiritual weapon. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> that's 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 sort of yeah. I'm moving him closer to to more things that I can attack him. And then I'm grappling him. I'm not grappled. I, I can attack him still. Correct. Uh, so yeah, as I like have an arm around him, I'll just take my axe and just bam and just start whacking at him. Okay. Chopping him up a little bit. Do your worst. Okay. So uh, first attack. That is a 19, which is a critical hit because that's one of my class abilities. It sure is. Fwamp, fwamp, fwamp. Okay, so <laughs> that is going to do 2d12 plus 6 damage. I got an 8, and then I got an 11. So that's uh, 19 plus 6, so that's 25 damage on the first attack. Shink! The... Axe oh. just sinks into its scales pretty solidly. More where that came from. And I'm gonna go for the second attack. Um, that is a that is a twelve. Which does that hit? Probably not. Twelve does not hit. Action surge time. <laughs> oh come Perfect. on! I can't end on that. Two more attacks. Uh, that is a well. That's a dirty. That's a twenty-one. Twenty-one hits. Yep. Yeah, great. Plus nine is real nice. Uh, and then that will do 10 damage. Okay. And one last final attack. Oh, hell yeah, that's another 19. Ooh, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> <laughs> 2d12 plus six. Okay, so that is an eight. That fell off the table, but it was a 12, but I'm rolling it again. Uh, that was a two, but I can reroll twos because I can reroll ones and twos. Okay. Uh, so that's a six. So total, that's 14. So that's 20 damage on that one. Wow. Okay. This this dragon is looking pretty rough. Oh. It is And down just there. for the hell of it, because I took an action surge and that gives me a full new set of things, I am also going to drag him 15 more feet towards... <laughs> Okay. Sophia's. Uh, <laughs> so at this point, you weapon. are dragging. You you are ten feet from Tuturu oh. and twenty feet from Safia. Yeah. If you drag the dragon, if you drag in any more, <laughs> you will drag the dragon into the path of your allies. Okay. I, How many I, people I will dragon be dragged? I mean, we can <laughs> willingly move out of the way, can't we? Uh, yeah. I, 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 I will drag it so it's not close enough to attack Tuturu or I mean he could he could drag it so the dragon is in the is in the magma. I mean it doesn't hurt it anyway. It wouldn't affect it, but I feel like he could easily have it, it off that way. Yeah, should, that should works. I magma drag the dragon. What's his name? Don't Perhaps worry about me, Astarok. I can handle myself. Take it to the spiritual weapon. You got this. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep dragging it. <laughs> drag the dragon. Um, and level one geek, thank you for the raid. Hey, hey thank thank you. You. Uh, I will say that we'll put it there, which oh, is no. in melee with Tuturu, but has avoided melee with Sophia. Woo! All right, I will say I will I will give you that kindness. Thank you. Um, uh, Mikal, your turn. Okay. Um, I can run, but. Seeing my my newfound friends here, and I'm just like, no, it's just something in my blood. Plus, this guy might be my brother, so I don't want to let him down. I mean, there's a shot. <laughs> I'm gonna do one of those, you know, tip, typical, you know, on my feet and just full on go rush into him. Now I'm going to this time um, because I have the ability, the hammering horns, and uh, I could push it away within. Um, 10 feet if it fails a saving throw, strength saving throw, uh, okay. after I hit it. So I will do so. I will try to hit it. DC 13, by the way, on the strength saving throw. But uh, I will hit it, and I will do a flurry of blows. So I'm going to basically be attacking it for uh, three times, right? Yes. Nice. 
Nat one on the other one, nat two on that one, and a 10 plus six. So 16 total. On the 16 does not hit. All three miss. <laughs> but is, it is it still pushed? Uh, I don't know if it is, actually. Let's see. Because uh, I, I believe it says I have to land if I hit a creature. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I would imagine it's a successful hit. Okay. Yeah. So that was... Uh... That was that was the attack and the bonus. Mm -hmm. Did you want to use flurry of blows? I you get one more, I think. No, I, I did use the flurry of blows. That was three attacks. Oh, the flurry so, of blows yeah. is three attacks total. Okay, right. I can I can make uh oh I can make two more armed strikes. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. So you have one one more opportunity. One more. Um. All right. Well, let's go. Fourteen plus six, so that's twenty. That hits. Yeah. All right. One six plus three. That's three total. Oh, sorry, six total. Okay. And uh, that's it. All right. I mean, I guess it is now hit, I guess. It is now hit gone. and pushed uh, 10, ten feet. 10 more it? feet. Uh, if, let's see. Uh, let's see where he's at. Um, I, I like this image. Him, you are pushed as well, Astarok, on the dragon. Yeah. And I'm I, gonna, I like I'm, this image that I'm like pulling it. And on the other side, there's another <laughs> Minotaur that's like punching it and pushing it with its head. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And, and Seth, yeah, okay. Sophia's watching this whole thing, and she's like, let them fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue to push him down into the uh, the main uh, platform there, the large island there, the uh, where where the spiritual weapon is, I guess. Oh, it's in range. It's, it's, it's in range. In, it's yeah. in okay. there. All right. Well, I'll, just leave it, I'll leave it there. Range. We're so it's close. Been in it's been in range since Astaroth moved it, so no, I'm okay. very excited. <laughs> <laughs> You're still very helpful. You, you did a good thing. Tuturu. Okay, Tuturu looks around again to see if anyone is really badly hurt or if she can help buff her friends. So she's going to glance around and see if anyone's badly bleeding. Astrock ain't got a scratch on him. Uh, Nicole Lydia got could... hurt a little. Uh, yeah. Lydia could use a little bit of help, but I'm it's like not... I'm like 60%. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. like a little less than half. A little less than half is scary. Um, so with that in mind... Um, Chuchuru will go. Lydia, how far are you? Oh, uh, take a look. Yeah, thank you. Feet. Oh, sorry, yeah. 35 feet. 35 feet. Okay, that's nothing. So, <laughs> uh, so Chuchuru will go ahead and cast a, she'll just do a level one healing word and the same uh, motions and verbs and all of that and just whisper and magic things happen. Great. And heal. Oh, real healing word, really? You guys are going to be like that. Okay. Um, so you're going to get 12. You're going to heal 12. Awesome. Anything will. Um, oh. So that is cast. Um, so I'm now within range of the dragon. Uh, you are 10 so... feet from the dragon, yes. Okay, cool. Um, does it look like it's like really badly damaged? Pretty badly damaged, I would say. It's okay. Uh... I'm just gonna wait for the spiritual weapon then. So. Okay. You could just make your own <laughs> spiritual weapon and just I, I have two of them just beating the crap out of it. So don't feel like this is like you have to right. say anything for it. <laughs> I mean, you could make a five uh, uh, pronged trident to also. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Um, uh, cause I have a hand, well, I cast a spell, so I have to, I'd have to just attack it normally oh, and hope yeah. it hits. Um, and I don't have a high attack. Uh, I'll roll to see if I hit. Okay. Nope, you that's scoot up? six. Okay. Scoot up to it, swing the, swing the master chill mallet and mm -hmm. no dice. But I think, uh, a creep, never mind, I didn't hit it. Continue. All right. Top of the round, Lydia. Okay, uh, how far am I from the dragon? You're about 50 feet. About 50 feet. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I wanna get some more stabbing in, so I'm gonna go ahead and dash over. Okay. Um, and then, I know, uh, <laughs> an attack with my rapier. And you're and still that... gonna get that sneak attack damage if you hit. Yep. Well, so uh, it's a 10. 10 will not hit. Yeah, no, it won't. Um, but so what I can do is, um, I believe I can still do fancy footwork for this. Um, I don't think I need to... Oh, no, that's only if it hits. All right, I'm going to use cunning action, and I'm going to disengage. All right. 
and uh, I think you have about 10 feet of movement left Yeah. Uh, after you sprinted. So there you are. Uh, it's now going to be Thraxy's turn. Thraxy's is still grappled. Did not get his breath weapon back. Uh, one bite attack at Tuturu is coming. Bring it on. 17. <laughs> That's my AC. All right. I'm going to come in there with 15 piercing damage and one fire damage. Okay. Uh, and then both claws are going to go at Astarok. Bring it on. 21 to hit. 21 will do it. 16 to hit. 16 sure won't. Okay. This claw is going to deal you 14 slashing damage. I'll take it. As uh, finally able to find a little bit of purchase on this aggravating minotaur on his back. Up next, Sephia. All right. Um, <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it and I am going to raise my staff in the sky and I'm going to, in a similar move that y'all remember me casting on Captain Phineas in the cabin of his ship, I'm going to bring my hands together and I'm sorry, Astaroth, this is going to hurt. Uh, no. I hope you're looking pretty healthy because uh, this is an area of attack spell, area of effect spell. Um, and I'm going to bring my hands together and I'm going to cast Shatter on the dragon so it, it erupts right behind him. Where Where is Astaroth in relation to the dragon's body? Uh, like I'm right around it. the neck. Okay. So yeah, if I do it behind it. him, it won't hit him, right? Like if I do it like, because it's a, it's a, um, it's an area of effect 10 spell. Foot, it's a 10 foot thing. So if I can do it like, behind the dragon so it hits the dragon yeah. will it spare Astaroth? Okay. I would say um, you can do that. Spare the Minotaur, save the world? Cool. So <laughs> I need the dragon to make a constitution saving throw. I have a high const... That was cocked. High constitution. And I rolled well. Uh, 23. Okay. That passes um, by like a lot. Um, but I'm still gonna... <laughs> so I'm just gonna roll the dice this time. I'm not okay. gonna do my cool thing. Um... And it's going to take um, um, 30, so it's like 15 uh, thunder damage. Okay. Um, and then the spiritual weapon is going to swing over to it. And this is more a flavor thing than anything. It's, it doesn't really change it. But you see it change shape from the Bident to look like Lydia. And then it's just going to swing and punch the dragon in the face. <laughs> <laughs> So that Lydia can see what it looks like to see herself punch a dragon in the face. Perfect. Uh, and then let me go ahead and roll that attack. Um, and that is going to be a 17. 17 misses. No! All of that! Armor, All of armor that? class is 18. Oh, I know, God. I was rooting for it too. Oh, no. Yeah, because I rolled a 9, I get a plus 8, so it was a 17. I'm sorry, Lydia. I tried to, and everybody worked so hard to make this happen. And I let everybody down. You know what? I'm going to say that you have, I'm going to give you inspiration for having the wherewithal, the with wherewithal, to turn into Lydia in spectral form and give All right, you I'm going to burn that inspiration prepare. right now and try to roll that with advantage. As is only proper. Badly. <laughs> um, and that... <laughs> I want a nine again. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was a nine, I guess. Yeah. Eight, no, seven, seven, no. So, so it was a 17. It was also a 17 to hit. So I'm sorry. Uh... I let everybody down. I let Aww. I let the uh, I let I, I'm gonna apologize to the people of this city. Um, apologize <laughs> to um, all right. Well, worth the second attempt, but Definitely. it still looked real cool, Lydia. <laughs> oh, just, yeah. yeah. But I <sighs> wanted to say the I wanted you to see I, I was just trying to like rally you for the excitement of doing it. So yeah. Yeah. Astarok, it is now your turn. Okay, so this is unnecessary, but uh, because he can, and the dragon uh, did damage to him, Astarok's just going to second wind just to try and heal all that up right away, which is just, so that's a bonus action. 
and uh, he's just going to gain 1d10 plus 8 hit points. Come on, d10. Kick another thing. And that is... That's 16 hit points, which I think okay. should put him entirely back healed. Thanks for the raid, Soul Bear. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the raid. Welcome. So uh, the the thing claws him, and Astrock is just like, you call that an attack? And just like completely shrugs it off. And then I'm going to attack him two more times. Okay. Uh, That's a natural 20. Holy shit. Yes! (laughs) This is like the best I have ever rolled. This is great. Uh, So that's 2d12 plus 6. So that's 6. And one, which I get to re-roll, which is five. Um, so that's uh, that's going to be seventeen damage on the first attack. Astarok, uh, describe for me how you put down the terror of Mount Valus, uh, Thraxes, the young red dragon. So Astarok like pulls it over to the magma, and then goes. Ugh! You should have just let us run away with the Biden and just jams its face into the magma and then just like pushes it in with his uh, axe to kind of like finish it off and just holds it down there for a while. And he goes, yeah, no, just stop. Just stop. All right. Okay. Yeah. This is, this is brutal. <laughs> I'll keep someone in a toilet. Just brrr, brrr, brrr. Right. <laughs> yeah. for, for Thraxes, that's exactly what it is because he's immune to fire damage. Um, and so he actually just drowns in the magma <laughs> with your axe. <laughs> and the spirit, the spiritual Lydia just kind of like gives it like a completely non-effective, just like punch on his face. <laughs> and then the real <laughs> Lydia walks over and gives him an unaffected punch in the face. Perfect. <laughs> yep. I was going to say, it, it might the look like the spiritual, the spiritual one, Lydia. The spiritual one high fives the real Lydia as it bamps away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and uh, yeah, you have and stay you have, down. <laughs> yeah, you have slain Thraxes. Yeah, oh. cool. Well, as usual, deception was a short stopgap between violence solving our problems. <laughs> I mean, the deception was was quite effective in getting you all into a position where you could, uh, where you weren't all gonna get fire blasted and. <laughs> And you all had sneak attack rounds and good stuff like that. So well done. Um, you and are... we didn't have to jump. It's true. We did not. You do still have a ten foot pole, <laughs> which we we'll have to we hold do. on to. Yes. Um, you can make your way back to the uh, the Forge Temple, um, Mikael. Uh, you can lead them down the mountain. Um, I will actually hand the uh, Bident over to Sophia as I saw her looking at it earlier, and I'm like, yeah, maybe this should be in your hand. <laughs> uh, gonna... You okay? Uh, let's let's head down the mountain. Yes, uh, she's that, like, she's making that noise the entire way back to the mountain. Patting her back <laughs> on the back, kind of like just pushing her, like no, this way, this way. Yes. <laughs> so Mickey. You uh, yeah. remember anything else about your dad? Uh, well, just a moment here. And that was uh, spelled better, Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a moment here. Let me, um, hmm. Well, I mean, that's, like I said, I haven't seen him in a very long time. We Minotaurs are not very familial, you know, we just... Yeah. Born and about it. sent out. Well, hey, look, way I see it, if we were, you know, two guys who were raised uh, not knowing our dad all that much, and hell, the guy's got the same name. We fought a dragon together. Way I see it, even if it ain't by blood, we're brothers. I, I very much like that. Yes. Yes, Astarok, you are. Now my brother. He'll extend and, kind of his arm out again the way aw. he did it earlier and just kind of... Astarok will go for the grab, but then pull him in and, like, go for a big, <laughs> oh, like, hug thing. All right, all right, yes. yes oh. oh, come on! Oh, watch out, our horns are kind of... Watch out. You, you uh, to, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, no, right, wait. Right. Gotta, okay. Gotta all be right, careful right. about that. Watch the eyes, yes, thank you. All right. Uh, 
I'm I know. Let's uh, let's head down. Yes. <clears throat> Back to the forge you go. Um you get weird looks from the uh the priests and the faithful that are uh in in the forge temple this time. Someone with a wheelbarrow looks at you all with your cuts and bruises and holding a legendary weapon of a god and they just sort of walk watch you pass and part the way for you as you head back into uh Perforos's lair. Perforos is uh hammering away. Um the work never stops. Um but when you return, he turns around. <sighs> Oh, excellent. You there, Safia. Approach. Wait, 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 we got the, we got the button. You watch your <laughs> hand reach down and basically almost envelop your entire, uh, um, you know, your, your not your forearms necessarily, but right where your hands are and lightly begin to pick it up out of your hands. She can tell she doesn't want to let it go, but she does. Uh, right, there's a little bit of she she's, she's, she's like, okay. It's like it's like if you were giving me like an actual lightsaber in real life to hold, and now I have to give it back to like it's just like, oh, okay, okay. okay. yeah. And it's gone. She will put it back on the anvil, except not ignited, because and, and this time he's going to kind of back up behind the anvil so that it is in front of him, and so that he can see it at all times, and he will go to you. Mikal, your new friends here, they did well. What would you, what would you have them do now? I, well, like, like you said, they did well. Did you see the whole thing by chance? Were you just like watching <laughs> us from in here? A god can see all. You fought all most nobly. Astarok. Good job holding your own on a, on a dragon. That was very impressive. Yeah, I kind of just went in and then I was like, oh god, I've just got to hold on or I'm going to die. Lydia, you and your prowess allowed your friends to do the killing blow. Tuturu. He kind of like, like he's leaning down a little bit further just to get a little closer to all of you. Your healing helped them. And Safia. He, he, he smiles again. If a god could really smile, it, it just, he takes the, the Bident back in his hand. I think I will have you take this bite into Thassia herself. And we'll hand the bite back down to you. I believe you are proficient in these types of weapons. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think I can manage the, the thing. He'll, he'll just kind of like solemnly nod at this point. Mm -hmm. Wait, so I can, can I, I can use it before I give it back? He'll just nod. <laughs> you have proven yourselves all worthy. In fact, Tutoru, approach. And he will lean back into his large chest of, of random objects and he'll produce a toga. He'll unfurl it. Oh. This protective toga will aid you in your journey. Thank you. He'll bow again. She'll He'll kind of like nod, up. rather. <sighs> She'll just kind of like glare at it and like hold it close to her chest and like back away slowly. <laughs> and Lydia. He'll hand he, he next to him are a pile of a, a lot of objects that you can't not really see because of the anvil. 
it'll produce a little box. He'll hand you, Lydia, this box. Open it up. And as you do so, there are small little vials of paint. And you can tell that these are magical. They are far more than just the regular paints for your crafty oh, you. abilities. These are beautiful. I shall treasure them forever. And Lydia does a very huge performative bow, uh, bow, <laughs> uh, and then maybe stays down a little too long. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Asarok. You, and he grabs a large breastplate of sorts, an armor, if you will, and he hands it to you. This molten bronze skin will suit you well, I think. Well, it looks pretty nice. Hmm. He looks out, seemingly through the mountain itself. One more thing. Your ship. He'll point off to, through, again, through the mountain itself. How about a boon of sorts? Mikal. Yes, Perforos. Did you need me? Go grab the cog. And Mikal will head over back into the corner of one of the, uh, the far reaches of this cavern. It'll produce a large brass cog with a little tiny filigree everywhere, a little small writing surrounding the edge of this cog. Is this the one? Yeah. Real quick, Q times. Thank you for the huge yes. raid. Sorry, thank I didn't mean to interrupt you. That was a big, it's a big raid. Sorry to interrupt you, Gil, yes. but it's a giant you're, raid. So. You're more than Sorry. welcome to. Yeah. Thank you so much, Q times. Thank you. <laughs> And he'll grab the cog and he'll hand it over. He'll just kind of drop it off in front of everyone with a loud thud. This, this cog is kind of large. And he'll... You may outfit your ship with this cog. It will grant oh. you a speed bonus of 0.5 times <laughs> better. <laughs> and it will take the form of anything you wish if you want it to be a new sail an engine rocket boosters that's entirely up to you what's a rocket booster? i don't know <laughs> but it could be that though right but it could oh, be that cool, really cool. <laughs> i am glad to have met you all you are all wonderful. Mikal, I need you here, but could you please escort these companions, these friends of Thassa out? Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Lord Perforos. Um, these are all very generous gifts, and we are very, very grateful. I'm especially happy for my mine. It's great. But we did come here for a reason. And we do have to speak to you about that reason. Mm. 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 Indeed. Just a moment. Just in time. Right. Yeah, there's the whole making, deciding to join the, all that we need all the gods to agree to undo the promise or whatever deal you made to cut off Theros from the other multiverses and allow access to the other places so that Theros doesn't die. Very... Well, you have my blessing. Your mission is worthy. I think with the companions that you have with you, you will do well in this mission. 
Now take my gifts, take them to heart. May they suit you well. Thank you. And he'll stand up and raise himself above his anvil. And he turns around, grabs his hammer, and heads back to work. You can hear a... Oh, gosh. Oh, it's so loud. Every time he strikes his hammer. And on top of the cog is a little four-inch stone disc with the symbol of Perforos etched into it. Hey, Athrock, you might want... Maybe you, could you carry that? You're a little bit tougher than... Yep, I got it. Astrox takes the cog and throws it up. It is at least a hundred pounds. This cog. I think um, I can carry help. that. I, I can. I'll help you. Let me. Let me help you here. He'll just kind of like hoist it on his shoulder. So the three of us are kind of like uh, <laughs> litter bearing this thing. Great. Um, yeah, you can uh, return to the moray. Um, I will send you the descriptions of all these items, but the cog itself attunes to the ship. Neat. And you can... Excuse me, I'm getting heartburn. You can choose the uh, um, manifestation that it takes, but whatever manifestation you choose, it remains bronze and glistening like Perforos's magic. Uh, since we're running pretty long tonight, I'll think about that this week and figure it out for next week when we can start the Excellent. show, it looks like. You're able to unmoor from Mount Velus. And Mikkel is at the uh, at the bow of the ship. Well, Mickey, it looks like we gotta part ways. Indeed, we do, Rock. He kind of like stutters the lean in. Not sure if that's what the moment was, but he'll just <laughs> oh, right. come on. <laughs> hey, look! When all yeah. this is done. And, uh, you know, Theros ain't falling apart anymore. Maybe I'll come back. Where'd you say you were from again? Well, the wastelands. If you head over to the northwest from here, that's where you'll find me. And that's where m mom is, if she is indeed your mom, too. Well, hey, maybe I'll try and meet her. We could find out more about, I don't know, who I could be. Maybe who your dad is, see if there is any connection, even if they, you know, just can give us an inkling. Well, I'll be here. You know where to find me. Yeah. Good luck, brother. Good luck to you too, brother. And Mikhail will slowly walk away. And, it and was wait, so nice meeting you. As he does turn and walk away, uh, Astros go, hey, you know, just in case, you hold on to this. And he's going to throw the worm's tooth necklace to... Uh... Thank you. He will attempt to put it on his <laughs> head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. That's yeah. yeah. It's always a little tough. I know. Yeah, I yeah. just you know kind of go over the right side. I should then... probably should unclasp it first. I think. Yeah. No. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, that is a good idea. Yeah. No. It has a clasp. <laughs> I, I just thought. But no. It's weird. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. You put on the worm's tooth necklace, and it strangely feels a little bit like home, a little bit like family. I and... I hold back a, a tear. And you move on to the rest of your journey and sail to the horizon. And I think that is where we will end tonight's episode. Thank you so much for sticking with us, everybody. Uh, we went very long. We had a, a, a big tech oh delay, and then we went very long after that. I apologize. What a um, fun episode. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was I'm so sad that after all that build up, both of them know. And also, based on like how much damage killed it when Astrog hit it, like I think my spirit woman would have killed it. it needed oh, I would have. Oh. Maybe damage. not. Maybe not. Maybe not. It was close. It, it was close. It I, didn't, I didn't fuck the numbers at for all. I, I actually like that Astrog got that off because Astrog. I think the way you did it was so fun to watch at the end. That it, was, yeah. it was worth it. I mean, I just was oh, like, oh, Kyle was definitely bad. impressed. I was like, I need to start working out more. That was, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so fun, y'all. Um,
tell the folks at home where they can find you. We'll start with Jordan. Okay, everybody. Hi, I'm Jordan Pridgen. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. And uh, also check out some of the older uh, Saving Throw shows that we got on our YouTube and everything like that. You can catch up on uh, uh, Wild Cards and, and Legacy and Deep Water Deep, and, and there's a bunch of others out there. They're all great. Hey, everybody. I'm Riley Silverman. You can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman and on Instagram at Riley Silverman. And uh, this Friday night on Ripley Improv's uh, Twitch channel at 6 p.m. Pacific time, I am running a special one-shot RPG of lasers and feelings with other members of the Ripley troops. So I'm excited for that. And Dom, am I mistaken? Did the episodes from the Trevor Project go up this week on YouTube? Yeah, so if you go to YouTube, you can watch the four-hour stream that we did of the season of the post-season special of Dice X Machina, which mm. was very fun to do. So that check that yeah. out. That was that was our treasure project fundraiser. It is a it's so it is now on YouTube. Check that out. Okay, I think I'm usually next. Um, hi, I'm Danielle Radford. You can just find me on Twitter at Danielle Radford, on Instagram at Danielle underscore Radford. Um, I'm one of the writers of the Honest Trailers. we got a new one coming out uh, tomorrow, as we do every Tuesday. So uh, I would appreciate that if you would go check that out. Thank you very much. Hey, everyone. Boobs. I <laughs> 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 I'm Ashlyn Rose, and uh, you can find me on Twitter as Ashlyn Rose, and you can find me on Instagram as Rar. It's Ashlyn. And if you ever want to check out my voiceover stuff I do, you can head over to my website, which is ashlynrose.com, and there you can hear my demos and all the crazy voices that are usually inside my head, outside my head. So yeah, that's some fun stuff. And we have some big stuff coming up on the Command Zone, so stay tuned for that. Very oh, yes. excited to share that with the world. Very, Keep an very eye soon. on our socials. Excellent. We've got... Cool stuff coming. Gil, you're spectacular. Hey, friends. <laughs> uh, my name is Gil Ramirez. I am known as Gil the Vlogsmith on the interwebs uh, at pretty much almost everywhere. Um, I, I do my best as, uh, for branding. Uh, but I'm also a dungeon master uh, for the Let's Get Wild Mount um, campaign over at Critical Bard's channel at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time every Saturday. Um, and then I try to stream my own thing. It's not that important. I don't do that well at gaming, but it's fun. <laughs> that's why I do it. But um, yeah, that's where you can find me. And I am your dungeon master, Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. I don't want to keep you folks any longer than you've already been here. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you next week on The Broken Pact. Good night, everybody. Bye.